going on, everyone? It's episode 117. What? Recorded on Sunday, January 15th, 2023. I'm John. And hey, Drew. Kevin was going on a business trip for a few weeks, and he was looking for something to keep his wife entertained. He had visited regular sex shops and hadn't found anything satisfactory, but then he wandered into one last store. He walked up to the clerk and told him his predicament. I've got just what you're looking for, he exclaimed. Excited as anything, the man asked what it was, and the clerk pulled out an old dusty box. This is a voodoo dick. It's <laughs> magical. You just tell it what you want it to fuck, and it goes to town. That sounds too good to be true, said Kevin. I don't believe you. I'll give you a demonstration, the clerk told him. He turned, he, <laughs> he turned on the dildo and said, voodoo dick, the keyhole. And the dildo flew over to the keyhole and started to do its best to pleasure it. Wow, that really does work, exclaimed Kevin. I'll take it. The clerk wrapped it up and the man took it home to his wife. When he got home, he gave it to her and told her how to use it. Then he packed up and left for his trip. The first night without him, his wife got a little lonely and decided to try out her new gift. She opened the box and said, voodoo dick, my pussy. Sure enough, the dildo flew out and started fucking her harder and better than her husband ever had, of course. She was going wild, having more orgasms than ever, thoroughly enjoying herself. After about a half hour, she was done and wanted to stop. But Kevin had never explained to her how to make it stop. She tried all the commands she could think of and nothing worked. She decided to try her best, put on a skirt, and drive to the store where he bought it to see if they could help. Driving wasn't easy. She was trying to focus on the road while still having orgasms every few minutes. She was swerving all over the place. Finally, an officer pulled her over and asked, do you have any idea how dangerous your driving is? What the hell are you doing? Officer, I can explain, stated the woman. My husband bought me a magic dildo called a voodoo dick. It started going at me and I can't stop it. I'm driving to the store where it was bought to see if they can help. The officer took a long look at her, thinking she was full of shit, and said, Voodoo dick, my ass. <laughs> you thought last week was bad? Just wait till you hear what Drew and John have to say on a brand new episode of the Dads After Dark show. And here they are. What is up, everybody? On tonight's episode, merch is finally here. The links are live. We'll be sending everywhere. Check the show notes. We announce our newest monthly mayhem. And what is up with Ubisoft? Well, we'll talk about it. Boobysoft. Boobysoft. John, you know, I loved the momentum on that joke. I know you didn't write it, but I feel like the punchline could have been better. Oh, what? I delivered it perfectly. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm, no, not. It's, you delivered it fine. I was just, I, I feel like with the voodoo dildo, there were so many other possibilities. <laughs> and, and it just ended in my ass. Well, not my ass, the cop's ass. Yeah, basically the cop's ass, yeah. But, buddy, how you been? I feel like, you know, we've been off the planet. I I was talking to you on my cruise because I just had to. Um, I found ways around, you know, no technology, but... uh, I thought you would cheat on your family a little bit more. You were like, oh, I have Messenger. It's the only way I can chat. And then, like, I didn't hear from you for, like, three days. But mm. uh, how was your cruise? It was fantastic. We had an absolute blast. Um. No issues, super calm seas, beautiful weather, about 80 to 85 every day, sunny, um, just absolutely blast. This was a, a Disney cruise, but it was a Marvel Day at Sea Disney cruise. So one day, the entire ship turns into Marvel. Um, I mean, you name the Avenger, they were there. It was uh it was awesome. All the meet and greets, they had like a special show at nighttime. They had like a special show. Um it was uh, it was an absolute blast. We had a we had a great time. Who were the who played the Avengers? I saw some pictures you sent, mm. and there were some Avengers. And all I can think of was this is a cruise, right? They didn't yep. fly in, did they? So, These are not like Disney it's actors. Interesting you say this because, <laughs> um, you know, I follow a lot of Disney groups, right? And over the last couple of months, like I see a lot of Disney job postings for like 
entertainment actor like Thor, right? Mm. Entertainment actor Loki. Um, and so you got to kind of look like them and you got to be able to kind of talk like them a little bit. But here's the funniest part of it. So Marvel Day was the second day. And I think there was literally, like I said, 20 people. And, you know, some of them you couldn't really tell. Like, you know, there was there was Groot and Iron Man and Black Panther and Spider-Man. So like they had they had masks. You don't know. Right. But there were a lot of like everyday looking people. Right. You know, for example, Hawkeye and, um, you know, Black Widow. Well, Black Widow. Well, Hawkeye was pretty normal looking. I guess I'd say like Miss Marvel. Um, all these people don't really have any masks or anything. So my point is, is later on the next day in the cruise, <laughs> I'm in line to see Stitch. And you know, like when you're in line for a character, there's always like the photographer and then there's like another cast member that, you know, helps keep the line in order. They kind of like translate what the character says. Yeah. Right? Because like, you know, the characters don't talk. And sure enough, it's Miss Marvel. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and like, she's just wearing like, you know, a polo shirt and slats. And I'm just like, you know, I'm like, oh God, I hope like Evan doesn't Marvel. notice. Yeah. Then he's gonna, you know, he's, you know. Even Zoe's oblivious. Like, she didn't even notice. But, um, yeah, you know, Hawkeye, we saw just, again, as just, like, a he's character like, <laughs> line. Like, yeah. so, he's, bringing, he's bringing out the chicken meals. You know, he's like yeah. a runner. <laughs> and it, it's funny because, like, when, like, they did like, the big Avengers show at nighttime, like, on the deck with fireworks and, like, fighting the bad guys, like, like Shang-Chi was, it was there. Like, like, this guy legit knew, like, you know, he was like a stunt performer. Like, mm. he was doing, like, bat flips and, like, you know, fighting the bad guys type thing. But, like, he was doing some stunts. Right. So, like, obviously, these weren't just average Joe people. But then the next day, they're just standing in line, like, holding back people from seeing Stitch. So, it was <laughs> it was, it was was funny to see. It, but, um, I mean, I get it, right? You're not going to have somebody. You're not going to oh, hire yeah. someone to work on a cruise ship for one day. That's what I'm saying. It was the first thing that came to my mind. It's like, oh, these are probably just people that work in the kitchen. Like, you know, yeah. you, you, it's a cruise ship. It's it's pretty it, efficient, you know. Yeah. So there, there's hilarious. definitely people I was I was curious, like, where else were they, <laughs> you know, working? Right. That's too <laughs> but, good. Uh, yeah, we had a blast. Like I said, the Marvel Day was cool. Um, like Disney fashion, you know, you had like the grown adults pushing kids out of the way to see Avenger characters like oh, I need to see Loki I like you realize it's not the real Loki right <laughs> because my son thinks it is and he just wants his autograph like and then like there was this like 40 year old couple no kids and the guy's like Loki look at my wife's tattoo and he's like pulling down her shirt like on oh her shoulder God. blade and you, you like look at Loki and Loki's like <laughs> but you know he's gonna play character right whoa look at that I don't yeah. know. I don't know what Loki sounds like actually. Not me either. But yeah. it was like so there was a lot of those people. Um and like the Marvel stuff was just one day, which I get and I don't get. Like it was you, you had to do it all in one day or else you missed it. Right. Um but yeah, well, we where are you going? Room. Like what do you mean? Where well, are you going? Like you said, there's there's We're literally I think there was eighteen <laughs> or twenty Avengers to try to meet. And and Evan brought a uh, Captain America shield. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to get everyone to sign the shield because he wanted to then hang it on his wall when he got home. Right. So, you don't, I mean, you've been to Disney enough, like trying to see characters and lines and. I never prioritize it, but like, I get it. If you have a shield and you want to get everyone, that guy would be like yeah. super motivated to like get exactly. everybody. Yeah. So we got everyone besides Black Loki. Widow and Gamora. Those are the oh, only two. Oh, I like Gamora. Yeah. So like some of the, like, some of the meet and greets that we had some time to meet and greets um, so it was called like um, the meet and greet we went to was um, Guardians of the Galaxy Encounter. That's what they called it. Right. And like you didn't know who was going to be there. So when we went, it was Groot and Star Lord. But then I think later on it was like Groot and Gamora. You know, so like it was just timed a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, we had an absolute uh, a blast. You know, I ate a lot. I drank. Oh. What I you drank, drank a, a ton? A no way! That's very unlike you. I probably had at least five beers a day, <laughs> and then I had like a drink of the. I at least had at least one drink of the day mixed in, so you know I had to try it. Um, I had a you know glass of wine at dinner, so it was like a lot. But you know, uh, you, you know you've maybe drank too much when you go to pick up the kids from the, the oh, Disney the Infinity, and they won't they won't let you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir, sir. Sorry, hey, they knew I'm not driving. Right, <laughs> but. Yeah, well, um, yeah, blast. I mean, I, I, I mean, this was absolute blast. I mean, I'm ready to already plan my next vacation, but I think we're gonna need some time off. I'll probably wait a good, 
you know, at least a year, 11, yeah. 10 months or so before we do anything big again. Because we kind of just did this back to back on on inspectingly. Yeah, because so. you did a cruise when? In August. Yeah, because it, it was like, I, I remember you were like, we're signing. I remember you saying we're signing up for another one. Mm. It didn't occur to me. It was like, wow, January. Like, that's pretty quick. Mm. Um, and we didn't tell the kids until Christmas. So it was right. like, you know, when you're not talking about vacation, right? It just kind of sneaks up on you. Right. So back to reality tomorrow, back to work. Oh, it's going to be painful tomorrow. No, Tuesday. No, no, we don't, you know. Oh, you don't get MLK off? Oh, apparently my work oh, does wow. not be, you know, Black Lives Matter. So <laughs> it's Martin Luther King. <laughs> I tell my work that, not we, me. When I started at Aetna, they had just turned mlk holiday into a floating holiday um, but this year it's back to a holiday so i'm off tomorrow okay so, we nice. get a uh, vj day off victory over japan day i think is it a rhode island thing and apparently we don't I get think, no, yeah we probably get that instead of martin luther king you know yeah so, i mean like okay hey, all right rhode island not gonna judge but you know what it's in august so that's okay i'd rather have a day off in august than january Oh, you know, but you know what? Like after you get all the holidays off, it's so hard to just cold go back to work. So this is like it's like a nice little like, OK, OK, you're back at work. But here's a three day break. Just kind of <laughs> bring you in a little bit. I, I kind of love it. You say. Um, so no, what's up with you? What about you? Um, no, I've had a I've had a good two weeks. I've played a lot of uh, The Witcher, which we'll talk about later. Um, kind of like crack cocaine fueled Witcher. I'm so like in a way jealous of you because i love the universe I, of the witcher i know and I it's can't. like i can't wait I, to talk I, about it I, like, I didn't think it would affect me but um even while i was on vacation you managed to somehow send me some videos and some pictures <laughs> got, some more. got more for you i can't wait i mean i told you my playstation app is like literally porn like it's just filled with witcher screenshots and it's does, just like does michelle know what this game like does she know I've told her about it. Like I told her today, I was like, oh, I had sex with a new girl today and all that. So she's like in The Witcher. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Does she like it? Does she want to like watch a little? Like didn't show me? I think she finds it funny. But Intrigued. like, no, I, yeah, I haven't really. I did show her like Tris. You say that's my girl? Not the sex scene, but I said he has Drew's girlfriend, but she's mine now. And, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah, but you didn't bang in the lighthouse. I I know. I, I don't know what. Well, happened. just saying. I've watched it a lot. Very- very oh. romantic scene. I I didn't I don't understand why it didn't happen, but it's okay. Um, I watched a lot of weird streaming this last couple weeks. What does that um, mean? Um, so I got to talk about this. Have you seen the Netflix streaming show? Um, don't pick up the phone. I have not. So you know I'm into like crime drama type stuff. Oh yeah. Um, so don't pick up the phone is one of the weirdest stories I've ever seen. Um, okay. it is about, and this happened, this has happened a lot. It, that is about a particular story at a McDonald's. Um, mm-hmm. I forget. And it's like some podunk town. I can't remember what it was, but it's like Midwest or whatever. And somebody calls the McDonald's and asks to talk to the manager and says, um, I have, a, I have someone here who's reporting that their purse got stolen at your McDonald's and they know the employee that did it. And they, describe a girl like oh, about you know five foot five dark hair whatever like that and um and this manager and, and this person's like a cop okay and the manager is like oh yeah that's stacy or whatever it is and anyway so it's like this thing now this is not a cop that's calling this, this is, is a, like a documentary like this really yes happened? this okay. is this actually happened so it's a prank a, a a prank call, not like a fun prank call, but a pretty mm-hmm. stamp. And they, they, they slowly over the course of hours on the phone for hours, they convinced them that they're in a police station about a mile up the road. And they said, you need, we need to do a strip search of the employee to see if she has the cash that was stolen. And they basically say, you can either, they can act, either come here to the station for the strip mm-hmm. search, or you can do it. Oh my and God. somehow this manager, who's a female, by the way, I, 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 I'm going to assume she discussed it with the employee and the employee's like, I don't want some cop strip searching me, but my manager of a couple years. Sure. OK. Long story short, they managed to get this manager to have the employee take off article of clothing after article of clothing after article while of clothing, on the phone, like in the back room while on the phone and eventually completely nude no bra no panties completely nude 
um, because they're like, we have to check, make sure he's not hiding the money in the underwear. They keep coming up with like these these weird yeah. reasonings or whatever. And like eventually the girl is like she's holding like a, like a tablecloth up to her or whatever to hold herself. But then like this has gone on for a couple hours and she's like, I can't keep doing this. I'm a manager. I need to I need to go. And so this guy convinces her to say, do is there like a man that, you know, that you trust or whatever? So she gets her fiance to come to McDonald's and go into this office. Yes. And and then they get on the phone with him and then the, the woman leaves the room. And so while the manager's out, they they convince this guy that he needs to, like, get her over his legs and spank her because she might be hiding the money in an orifice this this is stupid and the girl goes along with this because uh, she says later that she was taught to respect authority and it's like it's like mind-blowing like it but this is a person on the phone but what's the what's the end game here the guy's just a horny i think the guy gets off on it but this is the, the the craziest part he convinces her to give the guy oral sex to test for to see if she had the money in her mouth and they were like, basically, like, if you do oral sex, you can tell like and they do it. <laughs> what? And the way this story ends is the guy, like, I think sort of realizes he's done something wrong and he actually runs out of the office. And the fiance leaves. guy or yeah. whatever. So she has to go get another man she trusts. This woman is still convinced that this is a real cop. It's going on for three hours now. And she gets brings one of the custodians in. And the, and she's telling the custodian, the girl is standing there with a tablecloth over herself. And she's explaining the story. And the custodian, now, this is a custodian, right? Like, this is what you classify. They go, oh, this is a low-level job or whatever. Only yeah. stupid people do it, right? Not true. But, like, you know, the stereotype. Yeah. The custodian's like, who? What are you talking about? And he picks up the phone and he goes, who is this? And he hangs up and he's like, that's not a real call. Like, oh, my. This is a manager and the, the husband. I mean, it was the most bizarre thing. The guy, the fiance, spent five years in prison. Stop. Yes. For basically, I mean, he basically raped a girl. Um, I think the manager got off with probation and then she sued McDonald's. It's the, it was the fucking craziest story. And the entire time Michelle and I were watching this. We were just like, what are you, are you kidding me? Oh, like, I thought you were going to say you were hard. No, <laughs> I couldn't. I know. Yeah, we role play. I call her. Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> How long? Is this like a one and done episode? I think it's like three episodes. I couldn't watch it anymore after the first episode. I said, I'm done. Like, because apparently this has happened a lot. There are oh, other cases. Stop. I don't know. What, I'm intrigued. I don't know if a lot of them like went as far as this one. Like, I, I highly doubt oral sex came so up. So do they do one. like interviews or? of like the actual people and then they also do like actors or uh no they had in the mcdonald's one they had like the footage from the office they show some of the live footage oh yeah yeah um not that they don't like blur i think they might have blurred out some nudity or whatever but like yeah yeah. i mean i'm not looking to see if you watch the first episode i mean it'll make you just sick you're just like what and then you're just like how fucking stupid do you have to be um, so I couldn't watch it anymore after the first episode because I was just like, these I'll people just are so stupid. Listen, if you just come down here then and check yourself, but like I'm exactly. busy. I'm, I'm at work. Show me a badge. Like, yeah. I mean, oh my God. So I, we watched that. Then we watched the menu, which I won't even get into, but I watched the menu because uh, Peach is in it. Anya Taylor Joy. Okay. Yep. 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 Um, and and I love her in Queen's Gambit and everything. The menu. I won't say a word about the menu. It's on HBO Max. Do you have HBO Max? Yeah. You got to watch it. All right, I'm going to text Amy these two shows right now. So oh, I don't yeah. forget. I mean, like, you don't have to watch Don't Pick Up the Phone, but it's it's nuts. But the menu, it is one of the fucking strangest movies. Oh, it's give a movie? It, give it 10 minutes. I mean, I swear to God, the first 10 minutes, I was like debating just turning it off. I didn't know what it was. And mm-hmm. then it becomes absolutely riveting. So, like, um, you know, just make sure you get through, like, the first 10 minutes or so. Okay. Um, yeah, so just weird. I watched White Noise. That was weird. But tonight, The Last of Us. Yes, it's on HBO Max. Cannot wait. It, it has a lot of early, like, positive reviews. The greatest story in gaming. Um, <laughs> That's I'm not really, hard. I'm really interested to see if I'll like it as much in show form. Um, I think Michelle will like it because I don't know if she really knows the story of it, but very excited for um, for that to debut tonight. So, yeah. hmm. and you've been cruising, and I've been home playing video games and watching you've been, movies. You've been cruising and with TV, cruising, cruising, cruising. Yeah, we've been watching a lot of movies, so that's it. Nice. Well, how about a little break from our friends over at Manscaped, John? Let's do it. 
because breaking news, Manscaped now sells beard products. See the little scruffle I got going on myself here, John, just like you do. Uh, that's right. <laughs> they are once again revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. From a beard trim to fresh shave, the technology behind the Beard Hedger Pro Kit allows you to shape your signature beard look. Now you can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using the code NINDADS. That's N-I-N-D-A-D-S for 20% off and that free shipping. <laughs> I've decided we should be receiving this pretty soon. Um, I don't know you, but I, I'm, I, I'm a clean shaver, so I usually get like an electric shave shaver, mm. and I usually do the electric shaver before I shower because that's like I like to do it dry. Mm-hmm. And then I take my shower, get the steam, get all the pores open, nice and warm. And then I go back with a straight razor and clean it up. Um, I'm always in the market for like a good. I, I just want to make shaving easier because no one like enjoys shaving. Right. You know, I know I hate it. So it's it's something that this is the magic wand. And then we'll be letting you guys know we should be receiving any day. Hopefully by next episode, we'll uh, we'll have some uh, reviews on it. Yeah, I use an electric. I never I never shave clean, obviously. Mm. Um, but I have like a shaver and I'm, I'm curious to see if this is like a better product. Yeah. I'm um, curious too. Yeah. Especially, you know, their other products are good. So I don't know. We'll see. I didn't even realize that's what we were getting until uh, you just read that. <laughs> well, I mean, I assume so. I could be totally wrong, but they said they were sending us a new product. So what else would it be? True. All right. That'd be good. I wonder if it's we just all know like, we don't need any more uh, body wash. I mean, it'd be funny. I know I have a ton of it. Like if they just, it's just like, a, I mean, you could just use your manscaper on your face, right? It's got to be different in some it's way. It's probably the same thing, but just has a different <laughs> label. <laughs> they cross it out. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't get like a nice, like I like it. It's, 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 it's like, uh, it's going to leave a little bit. Yeah. I, I hope this is a true like beard hedger, like smooth. I wanted this to be down to, 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 to nothing. When I hear the term hedger, I think trim. I agree. Yeah, I trim. So right. what would you call a beard trimmer that leaves no stubs? A razor. <laughs> no, because they have the electric ones. True. Um, what you is just the take, name of that? Um, I don't know. Electric shaver? Yeah, electric it's, just, razor? it's just like a shazer. Yeah, it's a shazer. I, I don't know. Like I have a trimmer and but I can dial it all the way down to like a, like a, a small millimeter. So it's mm. obviously it's not going to be flat, but it's really close. Hmm. So we'll see. I, I wouldn't anticipate it, but, but okay. we'll see. Yeah. Because I, I mean, do they want to get in the razor game? How bold, how bold are they? They have a razor, I think, like a straight razor. Do they? I've never I seen think... it. I don't I don't think so. Yeah, they do. Well, we never got one. You'd think we'd get one, right? I think we got one in one of the packages. That I could, could be. be a, I, I don't think. I don't so. know. I, don't, I mean, no we got way. ball toner. We got chapstick. We got foot. Deal. I can't keep track. We got a lot of stuff. Yeah. No. I don't Anywho. think so. I'm going to be in the market for a razor blade soon, actually, because I told you, like, I, I did Dollar Shave Club a long time ago, and I just amassed so many of them. So I just canceled my subscription. I was going to try Harry's mm. when I needed them again. So I'm getting close to that where I'm, I'm going to do another subscription. But like well, Cedric, Cedric needs a subscription. now. Ooh, has he started shaving yet? <laughs> He's getting that like little bits of hair. Patches. Like I'm, I'm supposed to teach him how to shave one of these days. But he, 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 you know, he doesn't like come down and say, hey, let's do it or whatever. Have you and, brought it up to him? Uh, no, I haven't had to. I mean, he knows he's got some hair coming in, but like he does, he's not he hasn't grown anything or, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get like a subscription um let me see if i can get like a one subscription for us just for both yeah i don't shave that often so but wait are you gonna go back to the clean it all up you're saying or no no i i like usually every like oh, few days i'll clean stuff. up my neck yeah yeah, yeah. no i agree because yeah. like the the electric stuff just can't no can't get that no i never i never do that so well anywho and now monthly mayhem our first monthly mayhem of 2023 is Ooh. here. And this one I'm excited about, Drew, because this is one. How wow. long have I been talking about doing this? Um, no mayhem? exaggeration. Probably two years, maybe longer. It's been years. Um, this is all you. I was on my cruise. You messaged me while on the cruise said, how do you feel about this one? And I said, let's just do it. You've been asking me for so long. Um, 
You I usually to we the dis- game and played it this evening. Just well, to, let's you know. let's get into it. Usually we we usually we discuss it, but you were on a cruise, and I'm like, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, we are finally gonna do Ding Dong XL Mayhem. I am very excited. That's what my wife calls her voodoo. <laughs> Ding Dong XL Mayhem is when you are manscaping. Uh, <laughs> um, if you have not played this game, this is a very simple game. It's basically a pong type paddle game, but it's a one, one player. Button. Yeah, one button. That's all you need. One button. It's the easiest thing in the world. Um, basically, you just hit a ball back and forth to yourself. That's the basic mode. And there's a little counter that counts how many times you've done that. Mm. In the meanwhile, there's obstacles going back and forth. Um, there's power ups going back and forth. And you just use the power ups and you avoid the obstacles and you just try to get a high score. That's it. That's Perfect it. for monthly mayhem. John, what, you know what the best part about this is? What's that? It's 99 cents. Not 99 on sale. It's just exactly. that's how much it costs. I'm kind of hoping, it, I'm kinda hoping it hits a sale. Like, like give it at 49 cents. Let's do 50% off. Um, <laughs> this is a super cheap game. I know a lot of people do have it. Um, if you don't, 99 cents. And come on, man. Like it. It's this, be was, so, this was like so one addictive. of the original games on the eShop when the Switch came out, wasn't it? I don't know if it was. It's been there a while. It has been there a while. Um, so here's how it's going to work. Uh, there's three modes in the game. There's a solo mode where you just hit a ball back and forth to yourself. There's a That's the basic mode. Dual mode where you have two balls. <laughs> That's uh, 2019. It, there's You're there's right. two balls and two sets of paddles and you hit the ball back to yourself. This is actually a mode where you can play with somebody else. You can split the joy cons. And so one person can just play with the right side and another person plays the left side. If you hit an obstacle, it ends the game. Um, yep. So you can do this by yourself, which I love to do. And then, or you can play with somebody if you want to. What's really the point of this? Like why two? Just because they wanted to add another mode. You did I'm, double the points quicker. I, th- I haven't played it with somebody else, but I just love just looking at both and just using like the ZL, ZR buttons and be like, boo, boo, mm. boo, boo. Like, and I'm like, hit it over there, there. I don't know. It's just really fun when there's two. I don't know why. Okay. Um, but yeah, it is, it is designed for local co-op as well, but you can do it mm. either way. And then there's the infinite mode, which I will be honest. I didn't know that there was an infinite mode. Infinite mode's fun. I'm I not sure if they today. added it recently or not. It probably was there, but I never played it. And yeah, it's more of like a like a I mean, it's like, I don't want to say like a rogue or something, but like it, it's it's a bit of a different mode. So, um, yeah, mm. interesting. And, and the way it's going to work. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say the last thing I was like, there's there's a little of incentive. Like, you know, I was playing tonight there. there There's unlockables, right? Mm-hmm. So there, there's a little extra fun for playing. You know, a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, there's it's just characters, right? So like John said, you're a ball that goes back and forth. You can unlock different balls. <laughs> yes. Right? Yep. Different color of balls. Um, your un- yeah, your so mom unlocked my balls last night. That's nice. I mean, the balls are great, right? You know, you love a good ball. There's a there's a yin yang in there. Um, there's a dog. There's a random guy's face, probably the developer. Um, you know, eight balls. Yeah. Balls. It's just I, lo- I love unlocking things. It's just a little extra thing. Yeah. Um, and so the way it's going to work is we are going to have three prizes for this. Uh, $10 for each mode. So mm. the person who has the highest score in solo mode gets $10. The person with the highest score in dual mode gets $10. And the person with the highest score in infinite mode gets $10. There is no lotto involved in this one, but you can only win one of them. So you can mm. compete in all of them all you want. You could take first place in all of them, but you're only going to get a prize for one. We'll give a prize to the next person in line so we're gonna have three different winners all winning ten dollars can we make a rule right now um if you want multiple categories you will take the prize in whatever your highest score is right so if you won with 200 points in solo mode and 150 points in dual mode you win solo mode yep You're yeah we that. won't let you choose yeah we'll just pick it gotcha for you. Okay. okay yep cool so that's it i mean no need to complicate it Agreed. um it's gonna be a lot of fun uh give it a go that's great, great fun. Let your kid play for you and say, hey, I, help me win 10 yeah. bucks. It's 99 cents. I agree. This is something, you know, it's it's anybody can learn to play this video game. Yep. We're going to set up. I think we're going to just set up three channels for this. So you just put your score in the right channel and make it a lot easier on us. Oh, I like uh, that. idea. Yeah. So we'll do that. 
And this contest, oh, when is this contest running? Um, you didn't put the graphic here, John. I didn't have the graphic in front of me. I'm going to talk about balls while you try to find it. I got it right here. Okay. But you're you can lucky. still talk about balls. <laughs> nope, that's okay. This is going to run from today when you're listening to this January 16th to February 12th. That We record that day. That's two episodes from now. Um, so we'll announce the winner on our February 13th show. Uh, nice. And that's it. Um, I have an idea I talked to you about for another mayhem. I won't talk about it now. You did? I'm Give me trying to, I don't remember it. I'm trying to. It involves another console, Drew. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> I remember that. I'm going to work on Drew. Don't worry about it. You can work on me all you want. Anyway, by the way, we got the Bengals Ravens game on mm. another game with a backup quarterback. This has been so bizarre. Mm. These playoffs. Unbelievable. And is he a third stringer? Well, the Huntley, guy? is it Huntley Huntley? Was he the, the backup or the I third? Can't keep track. I mean, I feel like every team in the playoffs has some type of backup quarterback playing. There's been two third string quarterbacks San Fran, San Fran and Jacksonville. No, oh, uh, not Jacksonville. Uh, uh, Miami. Miami. Yeah. And they almost beat the Bills. Oh, my God. That's that's crazy. It's time to talk about what we've been playing. What have we been playing? Drew? Mm. Drew, I'm going to start us off. On December 16th, when they did the remaster of The Witcher, I had been excited for The Witcher remaster for over a year. And I just felt like, yeah, I'll probably play it for a little bit. Uh, I just want to see the, the graphic update. I've always wanted to play this game again all the way through, be more completionist about it, and I'm going to wait for the new graphics. But I might get bored of it and stop. No commitment. What a journey it has been. 88 hours. God bless Drew. you. 88 hours. And I, I, I mean, I never got mind blown. blown. I have been so addicted to this game. I mean, I had Christmas break to play it, so I, I was able to get a lot of hours in Christmas break. Um, and it's the kind of game where sometimes I play it while I work a little bit. But oh, my gosh, I have had so much fun. So first of all. My goal has been to try to do all the quests, right? All the side quests, all the Witcher quests, whatever. I know I miss stuff. And in the beginning of this game, I've played a few times and I was really excited to get towards the end. And I did. So once you get through uh, White Orchard, Velen, Novigrad, you get to the Skellige Islands, Skellige. And um, that's when I started getting side quests that I hadn't done before. And I was like, wow, this is fun. It's like it's almost like playing like a like a little sequel or whatever. It's like new content. And um, and I just kept like unlocking side quests and knocking off side quests and just delaying main quests. And I was just having so much fun. And then I rolled credits. I got a bit of a different ending than I did the first time, but um, I don't really find the endings that big a deal on The Witcher. It's not like a narrative game where it's like, I want to play through it again and get a different story. It's just like different mm -hmm. little mini cutscenes or story sequences. And it's like, okay, it doesn't, I don't feel like this is a game you got to play multiple times to have a different experience. Um, but man, like I did, I was, I had one Witcher quest left in my log and I'm just thinking like, I I'm trying to do all the quests that I have and I finished it and I got a PlayStation trophy that goes ding. It's like finished all Witcher quests in the game. And I was like, Ooh. what? I was like, I did all of them. Um, I played Gwent a lot. Uh, that's something I've always been bad at or avoided. I started getting um, bonus cards. I think I think Gwent is the hardest at the beginning of the game because you try to play people and they just have really good cards. And so mm -hmm. it's hard to come up with good strategy when the other person just has really good cards. It's not the perfect card game. Um, and uh, but eventually I just started playing everybody in Gwent and I found a couple weak people. And then when you beat them, they give you a really good card. And then it starts to snowball. Now I'm oh, dominant at Gwent. Um, I have a really good deck full of really good cards. I won the, the Gwent tournament in the game. I beat all the Gwent people that give you the cards. Um, but I will say there's one quest that I haven't done yet, which is collect all the Gwent cards in the base game. And I learned that you have to play like all the merchants and whatever, and they give you cards. And it's just like, yeah, I'm not super excited about that, but. Um, but yeah, I did definitely did way better at Gwent this time, uh, rolled credits. And then I took a little break 
And then um, I played another game, which I'll talk about next. And then I came back and played the Blood and Wine DLC. Ooh. I know you haven't played this because you you finished after Triss when you finished with Triss. I finished all right. Um, the Blood and Wine DLC gets uh, I always hear people say it's one of the best DLCs of all time, whatever. And it's a it's a pretty beefy one, but I knew nothing about it. So I was so excited to start it. The Blood and Wine DLC is like a whole region in The Witcher 3. Like, you know how like you go to Velen or Novigrad or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a whole new region. It's like just a whole big just side area. quests and people yeah. are banging. It's and... got a it's got a whole main quest going on. Um, you're supposed to investigate. There is a beast that's killing people and you're trying to figure okay. out what's going on. And they give you uh, as like sort of a down payment on your services, a vineyard. And so this is your house. You have a house oh, that's which cool. you don't have in the game. You kind yeah, of. Yeah, live, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you actually can upgrade your house. Now, it's not like Animal Crossing. It's not that fascinating, but you can up you can do upgrades in your vineyard. Probably more game. like Breath of the Wild. Like you're not going crazy, but yeah, it's just a place to call your own. You can put some like swords on the wall and some yeah. armor on a thing. Yeah. And um, so that's really cool. And then um, there is uh, there's like a whole like fighting tournament there and there's a whole Gwent tournament there. Um, so like I said, it has old main quest, side quest, Witcher quest whatever it is really fun um it has a really good new story mm-hmm. and i'm excited to tell you drew that there's another girl to bang what, uh, i didn't look her up what's her name i uh siana 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 or something blood like that. and wine how do you spell <laughs> it um did you ask me how to spell blood and wine i don't know how to spell her name <laughs> is it a c c just write blood and wine bang series um, shinless Wait, what, what, what do you want me to type bang I, in someone i just type in something i'm talking here so oh, um but yeah like um yeah i really enjoyed it uh there's a couple of enemies in it uh that there's like a centipede and this plant and they are fucking a pain in the ass to fight but um yeah i like the story and i liked all the new additions there's like new power-ups you can do for for your character I and they have those. grandmaster armor um so i got myself all grandmastered up honestly I'll, I'll i will say by the end of the game i was pretty op i had an amazing silver sword an amazing sword everyone lights on fire when i hit him um Ooh, who's this chick but i really enjoyed it she have and, huge uh, tits short hair i mean yeah they all do they all have the same tits but uh, it was a good it was a good bang scene it wasn't like you know when you go to the brothel and it's like the same scene over and over again really yeah yeah, yeah. um like this was a whole different scene and there is a line. I got to say the line. I got to okay. say the line. They they end up in this. I won't give it away too much, but it end up in this f- like um like fable kind of world with like little like stories, like three little pigs and whatever. And at one point, him and the girl are trying to get somewhere and there's unicorns. And she's like, oh, unicorns, we can ride these. It'll save us time. And they jump on and uh, they have you know, they're each riding on unicorns. And she goes, oh, this reminds me of when I was a kid or whatever. And 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 Geralt goes, this reminds me of something else. Now, <laughs> you may not. Yeah, I don't think you got to the scene, but there is a scene in The Witcher where you bang Yennefer on a unicorn. So he Did goes, tell me about this. Yeah. So, so he goes, oh, this reminds me of something else. And she goes, oh, tell me. And he goes, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. That's funny. Um, but yeah, I had a great time. I finished it up. So I'm done with the main quest. I did all the Witcher quests, I think. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take a little break, like maybe 24 hours, and then um, uh, do some other stuff. But 24 hours. I'm 88 hours in. I expect I'll get to about 120 hours by the time oh I kind God. of finish. I have the other DLC I'm going to do again, and then I've got – I want to do the Gwent stuff uh, when I'm in the mood. So I, I've loved it, and the remaster looks crazy. great. Um, a couple of issues. It's, it's done hard crashes, I think, four or five times now Ugh. in 88 hours. And um, every time you restart the game, the new settings for the remaster reset. So every time I restart the game, whether it crashes or my PlayStation reboots, I have to go in and change like five or so settings back. And it's really annoying. I wish they would Mm. fix it. Um, But it's great question. When they do these hard crashes, do you think this is the game or do you think this is Nintendo Switch not being able to handle I'm playing on PS5. I'm not playing. That's your point. So I mean, Um, but is it a graphical thing or is it like a glitch thing? No, I think it's it's a it's a glitch. I'm not sure if it's from The Witcher. I don't remember it happening with the original game, so it might be something that's new. 
Um, but yeah, basically the game just freezes and I just have to restart it. So whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. five times in 88 hours. It's annoying. It would not be as annoying if I didn't have to go reset my settings. It probably takes five minutes to reload the game and get back. To just, at it least. breaks your flow a little bit. But like I said, it's it's yeah, I hopefully they fix it. But I've really enjoyed it. This is the last time I'm going to play The Witcher. And so I am just trying to do every little thing. It's amazing. Do we know anything about The Witcher 4? Like if they no. mentioned it, they announced it. They haven't done anything, right? I don't think we know any information about it now got to assume they're making it it's probably years from now yeah i mean yeah, they, they are making it i mean How they did announce the witcher 3 they're working on two witcher games right now they're doing a remaster a remake of the first one Ooh. and then they're doing a witcher 4 yeah so okay. and i hope you get to play a siri that's what i want to see because she's With better got, shins she's got really good powers yeah i just want adult siri <laughs> um but yeah no i i yeah i can't wait for that but i witcher 3 is just it's just it's a total masterpiece uh, comes full circle john we this was the first game we ever talked about on the podcast episode one is it really i mean it has to, i feel like we started this whole i wonder what we shebang did bang 117 wow. episodes ago i've gone on enough about the witcher um, you have uh what have you been playing so i finished up playing cult of the lamb um i know i kind of did I, I talked about it last week with some negative and some positives and and i and i still feel pretty strongly the same both good and bad uh i will say overall though a bit disappointed being devolver digital with a couple of like a bunch of hard crashes and a couple of glitches here and there um i had a hard crash i was so pissed so there's this um towards the end of the game you need x number of cult members to perform this ritual to unlock the final boss and um i was a couple short there's a few ways you didn't get more people but one way is you just replay old dungeons and find people along the way the cool thing is in this game is when you go back and play a dungeon again um the way this game's set up it's kind of like slay the spire john where they have the overview map that you can go to like you can pick your path and there's like an icon Mm-hmm. And like, oh, you know, that's a battle. Oh, that one, you find a new person. That one's a power up, whatever. And they're much shorter, though. Like, I think like an entire dungeon is probably only five to eight, like little icons. That's it. Um, the cool part is, is when you replay an old dungeon, you play the entire map. And then when you beat the boss at the end, it starts over at the beginning again. And you can leave or you can play it again. And it gets harder. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it's pretty cool because the the the, the second time around is it's tougher, but you get better power ups, you get more resources, etc. So I was halfway through my third run on a dungeon, right? So I beat the dungeon twice, and I went right. back for a third dungeon, and I had all these resources <laughs> built up, all of this stuff. Um, it was probably forty five minutes, and it just and you can't save when you're in the middle of a dungeon. It doesn't let you. You only it's can so save bizarre. outside of a dungeon. And yeah, it fucking hard crashed. And I was so devastated. I was so pissed. I said, fuck this. Like, I was trying to enjoy the game. I was doing all the unlockables. I was doing everything. And I just said, this, that so like, brought me down. I said, fuck it. Now I'm just going to go get some guy some easy way. I'm just going to go beat the final boss. I'm done. Like, I'm not going to go try to build any more farms or altars right. or I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm just, I'm pissed off. Um, and there were some glitches, like, graphically, like, when I upgraded a building. Like, some of them didn't, like um they, they didn't change like they were supposed to have like the new look mm-hmm. um some stuff like that um but overall i mean the game's fun i feel like it gets old like in the beginning i know hambone talked about it too like you're naming all these people like i had Zablanc number three i had goomba <laughs> number two like and then like at the end i'm just realizing yeah, if you don't want to you just get a default character they give it a name they pick what animal it is and they pick the color etc but at the, towards the end i'm just saying yep that animal's fine but i don't even care what his name like, it, it gets to a point like i didn't care anymore you know yeah, what i mean you, like you, yeah you care at the beginning that happened with darkest dungeon yeah. where i made a drew and all that and then they die and you're like uh drew too and then it, you don't yeah. you're not connected anymore no yeah. nope um, like, yeah, it, it, so I, I felt like that happened with me um, over time. And as I mentioned before, the combat is fine, but it's not like riveting. Like, it's not like this is so rewarding and fun. Right. Um, it's your typical dodge roll, dodge roll, slash, dodge roll, slash. You know, like, it's 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 fine. Mm-hmm. Um, you have, a, you know, you have your spell and um, overall, 
in the middle ground. I, I wouldn't say don't play it, but I wouldn't say go out of your way to play it. Um, it was fine. And, and maybe not play it on Switch, because it sounds like it does have some more technical issues than maybe the other consoles yeah, do. Yeah, it sounds like it, it, it does a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely in the beginning has that vibe of like Zelda where you play a dungeon and then you come back, you do some stuff like like in between those, like you go do a dungeon in Zelda, you have some new things you didn't do. Hmm. Right. So you want to go do this and do that and upgrade that and go do that. And then, all right, great. All right, now I'm ready. I'm going to do another dungeon and get some more resources, and then come back to my town. So it definitely had some fun stuff like that. But uh, okay. yeah, Cult cool. of the Lamb. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I played. I beat it. I think it was like I think it was um, between twenty five and thirty hours. I played. Oh wow! So yeah, a little bit longer than I thought, but that's fine. Cool. Cool. So, yep. Back to you. Um, in between playing The Witcher and playing Blood and Wine, um, I finally went back and uh, played the final season of The Walking Dead. Um, oh, Walking Dead is the forever. first game that I bought for my PS5 when I got my PS5. And I have played through the first four seasons and a couple of DLCs. Like every few months, I just like, let's play the next one. I have enjoyed it immensely. But for some reason, when I finish a season, I'm just like, I need to like calm down for a while. So I was like, all right, I want to play the final season. And this game, man, I just keep expecting like it's going to get bad. I know Telltale went out of business at one point. It's like it's going to get bad. And every season just gets better. It's (laughs) It's <laughs> crazy. And the final season, um, interestingly enough, missed extra point. Uh, the final season is. Um, it's much more uh, I don't describe it feels like more like an RPG at times. Um, the graphics are really good. Um, there's a lot of motion and it just looks amazingly good. And the sad part is that uh, when they were two, there was four episodes in the final season. After the second episode was released, Telltale went under. So this is the time frame when Telltale died. Mm -hmm. And um, the story is that the last two episodes were finished by the publisher. The publisher is uh, Skybound Entertainment, and that's owned by the guy who makes The Walking Dead. So this is a a video game publisher for Walking Dead games. Mm -hmm. And so they actually hired a bunch of Telltale developers and got the code and finished it. Um, Absolutely great season i loved it um and man i cried so it was one of my hardest gaming cries in the last episode i mean this is 20 it's like about 25 episodes of the walking dead across i will say you all the seasons you're dedicated to this i wanted to finish you got to finish the story of course Um, but it ended really well and man, I was like, it was like some early morning and I was sitting there just crying and crying like a baby by I yourself, by myself. Um, but it's really good. So um, one day I'll play it again because this is a narrative game. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it's a big, long thing, but loved mm. it. I can't recommend it enough. And I think all of the episodes are on Game Pass now. Um, the final season showed up, I think, a few months ago. Um, but it's really good. You got to give it a try. If you've never tried a narrative game, try this one. It's 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 just done so well. Um, yeah, I loved it. I'm so glad I finished it, too. It's not hanging over my head anymore. Hmm. All right. How about you? So, John, it's January 15th. And this morning I said it's time for a Drew game. Woo! God. So what I do, I went on to my handy dandy list because I, I put all these true games on my wish list. And this was a, this is a new game. This game just came out um, this year. So within the last two weeks, it's called Hero Ish Hero Ish. Mm-hmm. Um, what drew me in is I absolutely love this art style. Um, this is just one of my favorite art styles of, of games in general. Um, it's like this uh, cartoonish, almost World of Warcraft ish um i don't know how you describe this it's not really cell shaded but it's just uh, yeah i see what you mean i I, i've always loved this art style it kind of game cube ish but it's obviously updated it looks it's crisp it's clean (laughs) game cube ish i I feel like they had a lot of games with that art style um like gauntlet legends ish type um anyways uh so i i that kind of drew me in uh this game had potential like the characters are a lot of fun uh they're really unique in a weird way compared to your typical characters um and it had a unique gameplay but the gameplay is where i kind of 
lost it for me. Um, if you've, they, they kind of described this game as, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's not a tower defense game, but it's one of those games where you see a lot of the mobiles where you like, you control like a hero mm-hmm. and then you have like cards, like so you have like mana, let's say that's building up automatically. And then you can play a card, which is just a hero and you keep playing them. So like you building up this little army as you're fighting from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen and you're attacking other people that are putting down theirs. Um, but you're controlling the hero in this this little mini map and you can walk around and you have to you do have to defend your base and there are towers. So it's not really a tower defense, but it has some elements. Um, it, it's fine, it, like I said, but I think there is some just lackluster stuff there. I was really hoping this was more of like a hack and slash type style. But uh, it wasn't. It was more of that card based. You got to drop your enemies, and they kind of auto attack. So everything's kind yeah. sort of auto attacking while you're just jamming buttons as your mana spills up. Some strategy on where you go on the map. <laughs> um, it was just eh. there's overall there's three campaigns. The first campaign starts off. Um, you can choose between like a warrior and an archer that has like a pet wolf. I went with the the female archer with the wolf, and I I beat all of the first campaign. Um, the second campaign is like a necromancer and then this like this like badass like rock, rock and roll guy with like an electric guitar. <laughs> it's it's I did not play that one, but it does have an online multiplayer mode that does require the NSO. Um, oh, so wow. I tried that. I, I said, let me try. I mean, I'm, I'm, I play the game. I'm reviewing it. Let me try the online mode. Um, the first battle, I went head to head with someone. I had no idea what I was doing. It's the same concept of the games that you're just going head to head. You have to destroy the other's tower. Um, so that was a learning experience. And then the second one, I got paired up with somebody. It was 2v2. Um, same concept. And we won. And then I think I played one or two other battles in single player. Um, it actually has like this free battle pass system built into it as well. Like, I don't know. I mean, I know this is on Steam. I think it's on Xbox. I don't know if it's like I'm playing other people, but um, I guess I found people fairly quick. Unless I was willing to it's AI people, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, you can play against AI or you can play online as well. Um, it's fine. It was way overpriced. I don't even want to tell you how much I paid for this game. Whoa, um, what did you pay? I paid $20 for this game. $20? <laughs> you can buy a real game for $20. I know. I paid $20 for this game. If this game was like 5 bucks and you like those style of tower defense games, give it a go. It sounds like there's a lot of content. Like I said, there's the three main campaigns. Um, I think the third campaign, the two characters are like this oversized bear beast guy. Um, And I think the other one's like a small little like mouse, almost like he's like like a a, A a thief rat type thief like uh class uh or like uh but yeah it's uh or an assassin maybe that's what for but uh yeah it was it was just okay yeah it's again called hero ish uh that's just hero ish and uh it, it, i i loved it had potential i loved the art style i loved the graphic <laughs> i loved the characters just the gameplay i think right. i should have i think i i think i did a little trigger happy i saw this like this game looks fun Rather than really researching what the, the gameplay was, you just, just jumped in. I jumped in. If it was, did you, the, did you check the Metacritic score? No, I don't do that. Do you want to? Do you want to know what know the me. Metacritic score is? It's got to be like two point seven. There are no reviews of this game. <laughs> well, it's new. It's newer. What? It, it, I mean, hold on. I have the website up right here. It came out of oh, January second. So it's been out for two weeks. Yeah. Hey, maybe it's on Game Pass. Give it a go. <laughs> Free on Game Pass. <laughs> uh, like I said, if it, if the gameplay is what brought me down. So if you like that type of gameplay, I think everything else has potential there. You know, all the cards have an upgrade system that you use your money from currency on to upgrade. So the game's fine, except for the gameplay, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. The most important part. <laughs> Only is, the most is, important part. The most important part is not fun. Okay. Just wanted to get that across. That's Heroish. a Drew game. That is what I think of a Drew that game. That defines the t- Drew game. <laughs> Twenty dollars. That's a that's a Drew plus I know. game. That's like I, a I Drew should've. premium. No, this game's gonna be four ninety nine within a month. <laughs> nice. Guaranteed. Oh boy. Um. All right. Uh, I should talk about what I've been playing on the Switch. So I will. 
first thing I want to talk about is Tactics Ogre Reborn. Oh, you were excited. You were so excited. I was excited. excited. Um, I fancy myself a tactics lover. Um, and I think uh, when Triangle Strategy came out, I realized maybe I don't like all strategy, like tactics games, because you have to like position your body, which you don't do in Fire Emblem, right? You have to position your body in a direction. So if somebody hits you from behind, you'll take more damage or whatever. Mm, I hated okay. that. It's like yeah, this yeah. extra step I didn't want to do. It's too complicated. Um, but Tactics Ogre Reborn, always hear really great things about Tactics Ogre. And it's in the middle of a long running series, but I've heard it's kind of standalone. And I was like, I got to give it a go. I got to give it a go. I played the game for about 11, 12 hours, and um, I eventually just had to quit. And I think I talked about this a little bit on the last show. I can't remember. I, I feel like I've talked about this. So um, a little I, think bit, our, right? I would think it was on our special. I talked about it. My problem with Tactics Ogre Reborn is not like a problem with the game itself. It's just a problem with me and how I like my tactics games. Of course, it's you. It's I mean, just it's like, just yeah. a hero. It's not the game. It's me. Well, I'll start off and say game is super polished. Um, it has a story. It has it the way I like it, which is here's some story. Here's a battle. Here's a little more story. Here's a battle. That's that's why I love Fire Emblem so much. Right. Um, it it's very slow. Uh, you have a little army and you have to control their movements. You have to control their attacks. You have to control the, the direction they face. And it is going to be very, very slow. You can't just kind of dash your people across. Now, you can have all of your characters, if you wanted to, automatically controlled by a CPU. Um, mm. You could pick like three characters you like. And, and there was a times when I tried to do that to make this game a little bit faster. Um, it, this is a game about uh, some warring factions and um, you're just one um, faction. I can't remember the name, like Weaselberg or something like that. Wesleyan. And um, yeah, there's like a, a few main characters and a brother and a sister and a friend um, who's a jackass. And <laughs> he's a jackass. And, you know, you do the fighting, whatever. There's a lot of menu. There's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of stats. And it was just, it was a really slow game. Like if you're going to do a battle, it's going to take you like 25 to 30 minutes. Ugh. Every every enemy you have to hit like eight to 10 times. It's not a quick thing. Um, you have to think about strategies um, like surrounding enemies, um, hitting them from the sides. And then there's, um, it's like a Pokemon thing. There's like elements. So like, you know, okay, fire. Yeah. yeah, like fire defeats ice and, you know, ice defeats air and, and all that stuff um all that stuff is fine it just was so slow you're fighting an enemy and you hit them and like literally a pixel of health comes off of them and it's frustrating and that was kind of what triangle strategy was originally i was enjoying this game more than triangle strategy um because it was a little more fluid and everything new and fresh however i finished triangle strategy i did not finish tactics uh, over i couldn't take it anymore i was it's having like you john it's unlike very you. unlike me i mean when i'm telling you i was having zero fun i was having zero oh, fun hate play is not fun the other thing that's weird is they have a um a level cap so if you're grinding or you're fighting a battle or a bonus battle like there's training battles you can't level up beyond the level cap. So like I would have battles where I was like, oh, at the end, it would be like, oh, level cap, level cap, level cap, level cap. And it's like, well, great. Like, OK, mm -hmm. um, I kind of don't like that because I feel like it's cheating. Let me grind and get really overpowered if I want to. Yeah. And maybe I'll have an easier time with the game. If if, if it would have let me grind and get a little bit more powerful than I should be. I would have mm -hmm. enjoyed it probably a little bit more, but it was so tiring to fight these battles that took forever. And the story just wasn't engaging enough. Um, it was a little bit predictable. And yeah, so I just, I quit playing that. Good for you. You deserve moved, to quit every once in a while. I Yeah, every so often I, I do. Um, so I moved on to a replay of The Messenger. And I have Mr. Hambone Johnny to blame me for this because one day, several months ago, he wrote and said, did you play Picnic Panic? which is the DLC for the messenger. And I said, no, um, it wasn't out when I played the messenger and I didn't particularly love the messenger. I decided I wanted to play it again. And last week was me starting the messenger. So I started a new save file and I just replayed because I, I, there was no way I was going to do the DLC having not played the messenger for a couple of, course, of years. Of, no, of course you, um, I mean, and I remembered very much enjoying the messenger it's the game that goes between 8-bit and 16-bit at some point and then you can dynamically switch between them it's very cool 
Mm. And I really enjoyed it. It was like a very classic go through a level, um, maybe fight a boss, and then you get past that level, go to the next level. But then about halfway through, it turns into somewhat of a Metroidvania, somewhat of a there's portals and you go back into the world that you were in, but it's different and you can't go back to just any level you want. Um, You have to collect musical notes. It just gets really kind of weird. So I got back to that yesterday and immediately I started not having fun. It was like, wow, this is what happened the first time I played. Like, I really enjoyed it. You beat what you could construe as the final boss in most indie games. And then it's like, okay, here's a new setup and whatever. Um, So today (laughs) I did something I never usually do. I decided, you know what? I'm just going to go back to my first save file, which I I finished the game. And I'm just going to play Picnic Panic now. So I would say I played about five hours of The Messenger. uh, Today? No, no, no. I, I've so so far I've played five okay. or six hours of the messenger. I know how to play and I got to feel the controls and some of the power ups, but I'm not going to go searching for every musical note and every little like green coin or whatever. I just went back to my first save file. I have the picnic pa- panic there. What a great name, and, by the way. I know picnic panic and the game has a great sense of humor. So um, I'm, never ju- played I'm, I'm just starting it. And uh, yeah, I'm just I just realized it's like. I really enjoyed replaying the early parts of the messenger and then the parts that I knew I didn't like. I'm just like, I don't have the, I don't have the patience for it. I don't enjoy the way the game changes halfway through. Um, It's actually more strategic and you can basically you're playing on two different levels at once and you can cross between them in these sort of warp points. So it's very, it's very cool and creative. I just don't have the patience for it because you don't always know where the hell you're going and you're looking for items that are hidden and I just don't enjoy it at that point. So, um, so, yeah. point. so starting tomorrow, I'm going to be or starting tonight after the show, I'm going to be playing through the Picnic Panic DLC, which is free DLC, by the way. Hmm. Um, so that's it. That's the Messenger and the Picnic Panic hmm. DLC. I booted up Strikers again today, John. I had to play. Uh, Andy P needed me. Did an informant. Mm-hmm. Need him holding down the fort. This is why this game, this is what this fucking game does to me. And it's so aggravating. So I played what I had to do out today. I went to my brother's house, watch some football, hang out. So this morning I played. I said, let me get like five or six matches in. I went one and four. And the only reason I won is because the guy quit. So I really, <laughs> I, like, I really didn't win a game. Um, super frustrating. The skill level is just like so good. The still level so good in this Is game it? now, and and they still manipulate the system, which hit them off the back wall right. and all that other shit. But you say so, like people are passing really well, like yeah. like that, that part of it. They know how to like intercept your passes really well, so you uh-huh. can't even get a pass off. They just steal it. Yeah. You know when they jump up in the air and steal. I don't know how to do that. Um, so super frustrated. So I was so pissed. So whatever. I went. I said I'm fucking done. Um, then when we came back, we were sitting around, and I said, Well, I'm not fucking playing Hero Wish again. So what else did I play? <laughs> So I said, let me um, let me play Strikers again. And this is why the game I, is so frustrating, because I then went five and oh, and I actually was like, <laughs> like dominating. And like they were decent. Like I was I was like, got my feel back. I had some good goals, some good plays um, this season right now. There's no hyper strikes. There's no hyper strikes and there's no items unless you get hit. Unless, you know what I'm saying? So, like, the boxes are colored, so only you can pick up that box. Yeah, and those only pop up as if someone hits you and you don't have the ball. Right. Right. So, no hyper strike, not a lot of items. So, there's no cheap gimmicks here. This is all skill. Uh, So, yeah, I I haven't checked, but we had, like, I I left Andy P with, like, a 42-point lead for our our thing. But it's also frustrating, because if you remember, you know, like, we have all these characters that people have to set and then you have to select the characters of your, of your club, mm-hmm. which I wish you could just like select your own characters in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to, because all of the new DLC characters, like we don't have any of them. We don't have them, right? We don't have them. I mean, because nobody chose them and like, I don't want to change your Bowser. I still use, I still use my Wario and we luckily have a speedy toad. And I mean, the, the fourth character is just a grab bag, but like I can't use anybody new. 
you know? Uh, yeah, and this happened last time, too. I was like, I was going to say, like, should I change my character? But I realized you guys use my Bowser. Yeah. I mean, if we really wanted to, right, I'm sure if Andy and I are the only ones playing that we could go, like, grab a couple people on there and say, hey, do you mind just going in and changing it to this <laughs> setup? Like, this is mm-hmm. what we want. Um, I'm sure right. there's people that would do that. And like I said, I play, like, every other weekend or so. Um because I still like it. I, it's still it's still fun, but it's frustrating. Hey, so. this is the call. If you are in our league and you're still on that club, um, go pick a new character and get some good gear and throw, mm. them, throw them in the club. I, 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 I see that as a flaw, but I also still understand why they do it that way. And I like it. Yeah, like if you I, were I an agree. active club, it would be really fun to do. It's just that it's like kind of a dead club. So yeah. it doesn't work, but I yeah. understand it. I agree. I hear you. So Mario Strikers still alive, still Still kicking, if you know what I'm saying there, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very good. Well, so anything else you got before we move on? Um, the only last thing is I'm playing a um, correspondence chess match with KC from the Switchcast. Um, nice. I'm not sure if you've ever listened to that podcast, but I know of it. I tweeted, I, a, I think it was a couple of weeks ago about wanting to play more chess on um, and and he responded and said he'd be interested. And so, yeah, I gave him my handle and he challenged me and. He has won the first match. We played a really Ooh. good, clean match. Clean. Um, I, 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 you I, don't want dirty chess matches. God I mean, me. like, there's no blunders or anything. I I sort of let a sure center pawn. This is the chess portion of the show. I let a center pawn go because I thought I could get an overwhelming attack on him. But he was able to fend me off. And then I had a few tricks up my sleeve. But it got to a point where we we're going to do a long, bitter end game where I was two pawns down. And um, I just resigned because it was just correspondence chess is not fun playing a long end game. So sounds riveting. I will get him again, but um, have a good little chess rival in the uh, podcast community. I'll get you next time, Casey. Sounds like you're owing one. You did your shit together. I got to do a little bit better. Ever since I've started playing chess again this year, I won the first two games, live games on on Lit Chess. I have not won a game since. And I've been playing really well. Like, it's not like I just blundered stuff or whatever i've been playing well i am just getting grinded so <laughs> i don't know um but i feel like i'm playing really good chess so anyways hopefully i have a better update next time that's it for what we've been playing uh, all about chess i do know a lot about chest <laughs> <laughs> let's get to the meat drew we got merch March is upon us. We've slaved. We're sorry this took so long. We are. We are. We're sorry. But I'm going to be honest. We used to Redbubble. Redbubble kind of sucks dick. I'm not going to lie. I will say their products, because I've ordered from Redbubble over the years. My old Disney podcast, um, we we ordered some personalized stuff from them. Um, we didn't make it public. Their merch is super quality. Like Top of the line. I love, I love their shirts. I love their coasters and some of their other random stuff. Uh, their socks are quality, but their UI interface for like um, what, what what do they call us? Like the not developer, we're like the merchant. The, um, yeah, like a, like our, a our merch... portfolio, whatever yeah, you want. Portfolio, to call. The creator, yeah. the creator portion of it, like it's just not great. Like you have to have five different logos. <laughs> it's so just, silly. Just to go live, like I had to create fake logos and then delete them. Oh, yeah, uh, but anyways, regardless, th- we're there. We're live. John, how do we find us? And what do we got? Uh, so it's not the most nagable. If you go to redbubble.com and search for Dads After Dark Show, what will likely happen is you'll see our designs. Um, the same goes for Nintendo Dads, too. You'll find the design, their designs there, too. But you don't see all the products because you only see one particular product per design. Um, so what you want to do is just click on it, click on the logo you like or whatever. And if you scroll down a bit, it'll say, like, view 21 other products or whatever. That's the normal way to do it. Mm -hmm. But we have four little screens that will take you directly to all the products for all of our logos. And we have a little bit.ly address for them. So um, if you navigate to if you go to the URL bit.ly L-Y slash dads dash merch, um, you will see merchandise of our logo. If you go to bit.ly slash dads dash merch dash classic, um, you'll get the blue logo that we have. That's what we call that's our that's our standard logo Mm -hmm. um you'll see it on our podcast sometimes that sort of thing uh if you go to bit.ly slash dads dash merch dash alternate that you'll see that it's like the black logo that we use a lot 
mm, um, especially sexy. when we need to resize. Yeah, we use that on Twitter. And then if you look at bit.ly slash dads dash merch dash spooky, uh, you will get our Halloween logo and merchandise for Halloween. So um, there's different products there. We can we select which products we want. We want to make sure they look good on the product. So you can't just buy anything with them. Yeah, um, we go through and, and sort of curate which ones we want to do. Mm. Um, but there's like iPhone cases and there's pillows and there's shirts and there's stickers and all that jazz. So um, I ordered a bunch of it. I'm waiting for it to come in. Um, but yeah, that's how you can access our, our store. So if I had to recommend two items, I'm going to recommend one, the coasters. I have bought tons of these mm-hmm. coasters. They come out great. Um, the one I recommend is the one with the official blue clouds in the background. They come out, they've got this nice glossy feel. Um, the other one, if you're looking for a t-shirt, they have the active t-shirt. It's like, um, what do you call it? Kind of like that, not Under Armour, but it's that like um, athletic wear active t-shirt material. I own right. one of those as well. They're really nice as well. Um those are my two like favorite products, but uh, there's like I said, the socks are really nice. I mean, all of like their accessories for phones and things like that are also nice. The stickers are actually great. Uh, I know some of you guys might already have them from random giveaways or whatever it might be, but um, those are also also nice. So yeah, but, yeah. I mean, do you have a favorite favorite one? Um, you sent me the socks, and I really love them. So I ordered another pair of socks. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I got the Halloween socks. Oh, I love the Halloween. Mm-hmm. I gotta buy some Halloween coasters. I think you sent me. I still have. I'm using it right now. I use the uh, the the After yep. Dark Show coaster. I got, got mine right here as well. Yep. Um, these, are, these are nice. The stickers are good quality. Um, so yeah, I think I also ordered. Uh, I've got an iPhone case coming. Um, what else do I have? I have some other things. I I have a. Um, I didn't order the backpack, but you can actually order a, a backpack, an mm. after dark backpack. Um, but let me see. I ordered the socks, the Halloween socks. Oh, I got the alternate logo tote bag. Ooh. Um, particularly well timed because um, I don't know if you knew this, but in Colorado, we just we have a law that went into effect now that you get charged for plastic bags at supermarkets. Yeah. So now you got to bring your tote bags. I totally inconvenient. I totally support it, though. Um, so I was like, oh, let me get a dad's after dark show tote bag. So I can, I have that it to just bring to the store. Like if you forget your bag or like, yeah. there's just, there's not, it's one of those things you have to get trained into it. But yeah, like I'm, I'm so tired of seeing fucking bags and trees all the time. It's just like, you know, whatever. You, you just got to get into it. But how um, big is this tote bag? Is it going to fit in? Like, I'm, I'm curious now. It's a medium. They, the default is medium size. I think it should be good. Um, okay. I might go with a large if I feel it's a little smaller. I, you know, I'll have a couple. I'll do a different yeah. design. Um, yeah. and then I got an iPhone um case, which I usually don't get, but it's like a soft case and it's like the black Ooh, I like logo. That. I like um, that. So I wanted to try it. So yeah, yeah. If you see something that you would like your logo on and you don't see it, just let us know. We can maybe add it or modify something to make it look pretty. Um, or tell you the reason why it's not there. <laughs> Yeah, mouse pads uh, are nice too. They have some mouse pads and some desk pads, like the little bit bigger ones too. Which I, I mean, I might might grab one of those. Yeah, I, I remember if we have any of those. I don't use a mouse, so I probably didn't care. But um, you don't use a mouse for work. I use I use a trackpad. So um, for work. Yeah. You mean, what do you mean like for work? What's a trackpad? Don't you use a little finger on? Yeah, like it's like a most Apple users don't use mice as much anymore. They use the, the pad because you can do gestures and stuff like that. Not sure what that um, means, but I'll take your word for it. I'm going to give you a gesture right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I don't gesture. I don't use a mouse. All right. Anyways, merch. Go buy some. John, we're going to put this in our show notes under the all the episodes going forward. Yep. Right. Yep. And yep. we'll post it in uh, Discord. Yeah, command. That was a command. We'll do that. Can I post it in Discord now? Uh, Yeah. Right. You're, oh, you're copying the whole thing. Ooh, I hope that shows up well. You don't think it will? I don't One know. at a time? Yeah, I don't know. No idea. No, I don't know. Let's find out. I don't know. All right. All right. That's it. Merch is cool. All right. Sweet. Let's talk about what we wanted to talk about on the show today. What's, which is? Uh, first thing we want to talk about is 2023 is fast approaching so fast that we're in it. And uh, I want to talk about the year um maybe some light predictions uh we're not doing a prediction contest or anything no but, we're not doing that um what are you looking forward to this year and um 
yeah, let's talk about it. 2023 is here. Uh, we had a whole year of gaming. We did our goaties of the year. And Goatee? now I will tell you, there is a lot I'm excited for in 2023. How about oh, you? Like, I did. I took some notes, John. I came prepared. Um, I'm a few, well, I'm not, I'm not super excited for a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm going to 2023 winning it as one may say, that's my strategy. Um, what kind of pops up and goes, you know, I still have sports story out there that I need to play eventually. Oh, you do. You do. do. Um, I'm actually in the market. I think I'm going to go play Pokemon sword and shield. Um, I, wow. I, I got a little itch. I want to play it. Uh, it has DLC too, so like I know I saw yeah. that, and and Evan will be pumped. So, but overall, what I'm excited for is we talked about earlier last episode about our forever games, right? Mm. And there's I, I totally forgot there's two coming out this this year that I don't know if they're gonna be my forever game, but I'm definitely jumping on the bandwagon in the beginning and see how it takes off. The first one is obviously we've talked about Disney Speedstorm. I have a feeling oh, this might God. fall off a little bit for me. I don't know how, you know, anytime you have these kart racing games, you're just never going to compare them to Mario Kart, right? Now, this has been in development for a long, long time. Um, who, I forget who's developing this one. Someone big, not Ubisoft, are they? Game Loft. Game Loft. I love Game Loft. I know some people don't, but I love Game Loft. Um, I'm excited to see what they bring to the table on this and how they're going to do it. Uh, I mean, me and you are Disney fans. So it'll be fun to see like the different levels and characters, but I'm also not going to try to fall into the trap to spend $25 for Peter Pan, even though I probably would. My next one, similar concept, Star Wars Hunters. This this could be a, mm. a fun one. This definitely is that Overwatch, Paladins. Um, you know, I'm I'm in on this one. I've already looked at the, these different characters. You can be like a droid or a bounty hunter or um i i I spent a while but there's all kind of droid or a different kind of bounty hunter sure a jedi right (laughs) um and then you also have your classes like a medic or you know a brawler or or whatever you want to be so um i'm definitely there's not a ton of information on this out yet or we don't even have a date but i'm definitely gonna jump on this one as well Uh, a couple more advanced wars obviously i'm excited for i think that's going to be early i think that's going to be coming up sooner than later to be honest i think so uh Lord of the Rings Gollum. Been talking about this one for a while. This is a stealth like game. You play as Gollum. Don't know a ton about it either. We don't have a hard date. This was originally a 2022 Wait, game. Hold on. Did you say a stealth like? Like stealth? a, yeah, is that is a, it game? a stealth is game it... or did you mean roguelike? Is it? I meant stealth. What's a stealth like? I don't know. Just it's a category. I just <laughs> I don't know. It's, okay, all right. it's a stealth right. game. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> stealth like. It's, it's like a stealth game. It's. <laughs> It is. <laughs> it is a stealth game. Um, this was originally in 2022, and it's now 2023. We don't have any hard dates on this. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be day and day Switch and other consoles, but I know it is coming to the Switch. Um, of course, one of my favorite couch co-op games of all time is coming out with a sequel, moving out to this. Oh, week. Yeah. This is on mine and my wife's radar. I can't wait for this one. This will be lots of fun. And John, the game that will finally make me buy a Luna Though it's not coming out on Luna until 2024, what? I have to wait one more year. Avatar: Lord of the Rings. Frontiers of Pandora. You're going to get a Luna because of an Avatar game? Yeah, I did I will. not have that on my bingo card. This game is me. This is an a, a open world adventure oh. um, in Pandora. I mean, what besides Middle Earth? Pandora's next on my list. You were going to say, what more could you want? And I was ready with some snark. I was I was waiting for the end of that sentence. Well, M- Middle Earth is what more I could want. I want Lord of the Rings, Frontiers of Middle Earth. That's what I want. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm dead serious. Um, I will probably I buy a lunar, 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 Luna to you play. Like buy a Luna. You subscribe to the service. Well, you got to buy the controller, don't you? In the little. Uh, I don't even know. You probably don't even need a controller. It's really just a service. I, mean, you start, I think you pay 50 bucks you get the controller and yeah maybe i, I don't do you need the little usb or anything i don't know you get your money refunded in like 2026 probably well so. i'm thinking that luna might not survive before, until this not game comes out yeah it's okay the game will come out now if it's only out on like xbox or something like that then i feel like that'll be the thing that does it for you what what do you what do you mean well, like if it's not on Luna and you clearly you need to play this game 
that might be I, the time you get a PlayStation or an Xbox. I don't know if I would, though, because like oh, I could oh. play this game for a lot cheaper through Luna than having to don't buy a whole. No, but if Luna is not around. Oh, correct. Right. I mean, we still don't know a lot about this game, right? So I, I, I have to see it still. And and I mean, it's an open world game. They're all the same, right? It's going to have blue people in it. It will have blue people. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> And it'll take $2 billion to build. Probably. Did I tell you I seen the new movie? Did we already talk about that? You talked about it somewhere. Mm, I did. I enjoyed yeah. it. It was good. It was fun. I yeah, liked I think... the first one better, but this one was still good. Yeah. Anywho, what about you? What are you excited for? Um. Yeah, before I go into my list, none of whatever you just discussed. <laughs> none. Love I mean, it. like. Not even on my list, wouldn't even be on the top 100 of my list, but moving out that's too. fine. Yeah, Not important. Right. I tried moving out. How like I tried it. We tried it with the family. They didn't like that's it. Right. I tried it with Cedric. I enjoyed it more with just Cedric, but we just never finished it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a bad game. I just I don't know. I, I maybe overcooked is like I, I yes. just need overcooked. overcooked. I can't do too perfect. many of them. Yeah. So Star Wars Hunters Disney Speedstorm, you will not be trying either one of them. Not even no i don't like star wars games um and in fact like i played so like just to start my list but like i enjoyed fallen order i gave it an eight and a half out of ten um but i have no interest in the sequel i don't know why i think i i played fallen order for free uh early on when i got game pass Mm. and um so i really enjoyed it but like I, i would never buy it or i don't i don't know i'm just not into the sequel i'm not big into the star wars universe so everyone's gonna have fun with that you go for it um, sure it's coming up pretty sure. soon so the games i am the most hyped for i actually ordered these these are ordered so you know which games have my hype hmm. uh the number one game that i'm hyped for in 2023 fortunately comes out one week from now uh fire emblem engage is my number one hypity hype wow. game of the year um i love fi- I, fire emblem series is my was my favorite series till life is strange came around and um, I love Three Houses. I played it multiple times, but like I am ready for like a more core Fire Emblem game. OK, um, I love the whole ring concept that's going on. It's you're kind of a lord. of. So them. I watched like a five minute video on this game the other day. Mm-hmm. Right. I need your honest opinion. You know, games I play hero wish would <laughs> would this game? No, I mean, but you also know not a game I, I would recommend to you, but you also know, I mean, I played Wardrobe. I know this is, I know it's different. And I loved Ward, love Wardrobe. I'm assuming I'm going to love Advanced Wars. And I know it's similar in a, in a way, right? It's not, it's not completely it's, different. Yeah, it's close to Wardrobe, but yeah, different too. So I guess my question is, is like, how much of it is this storyline? Because I'm going to be honest, that part kind of turns me off. Like, I don't want to just be reading dialogue, like, after dialogue. I want to just battle. Fire Emblem has always been a game where you get a little bit of story and then you get a battle and then you get a story and a battle. And that's why it's so good. It's like the story doesn't overstay its welcome. The okay. battles are a focus. And then you can grind and do practice battles and all that stuff. Three Houses was the first game that really had this like, quote unquote, open worldy area. Mm. And you had tea with people and whatever. <laughs> so so some terrible. of those elements were there in the games, but they're just more fleshed out in that one. I enjoyed Three Houses, but I also was like, okay, but I don't want to do this every Fire Emblem game. This one, I think, is going to be more core. But I've also heard that the hub area, um, Dylan mentioned this, the hub Dylan? area is oh, bigger. Dylan. No, don't. Dylan. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. Dylan. Gotcha. Um, the hub area is bigger than the school in Three Houses. I don't know what that means because they're not accentuating that's a big part of the game. So what I would tell you is this. I know you loved Wargroove. Wargroove to me is more like Advance Wars. Yes. Um, more advanced wars than Fire Emblem. Um, you might like Fire Emblem, but I would never like. I'm not going to sit there and say, Drew, you would love this game. Like, if you play it, I hope you enjoy it. If you don't play it, I'm not going to hold it against you. Mm. Um, so you might enjoy it because it's the same kind of battling. But a Fire Emblem game, all of your characters are perma characters, mm-hmm. whereas in War Groove, it's like one captain and then a one bunch battle. of peons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I love them both. And like I said, I, th- those are the games that made me love, think I love tactics and love war groove. And I loved uh, advanced wars and fire emblem. It's these isometric ones where you have directions. I never, I but don't it's like. definitely a different strategy than like where in war groove, you can kind of sacrifice your peons. Like you're not really sacrificing yes. characters as much in these, in this tactics type game. Well, the thing with fire emblem is historically it has permadeath. So what happens is 
if a character dies, they're dead forever. But for the yeah. most part, people just go, nope, I want to like revert back to my save. Restart which, the battle. Which they didn't always make easy. Sometimes you have to do really fancy things to do. But now Fire Emblem's gotten in this cycle of you can rewind time a certain set number of times in a battle. So I think that's the perfect solution. It lets me say everything here is permanent and I might have to accept a death. But if I make a mistake or I just do the wrong move or something random happens, I can go back a certain set number of times and save myself. It's the perfect, it's perfect, perfect it's solution. Allowed. It's allowed. Yeah. So um, how long is like a typical battle? In fire? Is it like an hour? Is it half hour? They, they can be much. They're much more quick because like a lot of times you okay. you hit a guy and you can take them out in one shot or a couple it's just a much more fluid battle. I wish that was what <laughs> Tactics Ogre was. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's much more fluid. It's it's faster than Wargroove. Wargroove is, was a little the, slow. Yeah, it is slow. I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm so on the fence, but I guess the other thing is like, what else is there to play? And that's why I was thinking about yeah. maybe picking up, you know, Pokemon, because it's like... It's a totally different universe. Well, of but, course, um, but I mean... yeah. I, I, I love Engage. If you want, just wait. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you if like, maybe you won't. If yeah, it's not so bad, I'm so. going to play it a bunch day one because I'm going to do a first look yeah, for the dad. I'll wait then because you'll 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 know if it's if it's for me or not. Yep. Uh, right, that's cool. definitely my number one hyped up game. Uh, number two, and it's pathetic that you didn't say it, but Tears of the Kingdom. But um, it's an obvious given. I don't have to say that. <laughs> you need to declare it. I do not. Um, that's May. That is like me taking a week off of work in May. Um, that kind of hype. I for might it. take a, a day or two. Mm hmm. Um, next up, Mina the Hollower. Uh, this is from Yacht Club Games of Shovel Knight fame. Yacht Club never misses. And Mina the Hollower, I think, is supposed to come out in December, so it might slip into 2024. Uh, super hyped for this game. I've watched this trailer so many times. Ah, oh, I cannot wait. Um, that's going to be late 2023. It's a long ways um, away. Diablo 4, that comes out in June. It does? Uh, Do we know what comes out on the Switch? There is no word that it's coming out on the Switch. Almost guaranteed at this point, it won't be day one on the Switch. Mm. Um, but it's, I mean, it's a little more graphical. And are you playing it without me? I'm, yeah, I'm playing that. I'm playing yes, that shit. Maybe we'll come out on Luna. <laughs> I didn't get my um, Luna early. I'm kind of hoping it, yeah, I'm hoping it comes out on like a Game Pass so I can just try it and before I commit like $70 to it. But you uh, know what's going to be, you know what it is. There's, there's no trying it. You know what I, it is. This is one of the top games where I'm so hyped for it, but I could also see myself not playing it because I don't want to commit 300 hours to it. But I'm going to play it on my PS5. Um, I hope it comes out on Switch and I hope we can play together. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to play it on the Switch. I'm going to play it on PS5 no matter what. Um, next up, Pikmin 4. <laughs> I am excited for Pikmin 4. Never played one. You never played a Pikmin? Huh. Interesting. I, I've always enjoyed Pikmin, but I'm not like married to the series or anything. Um, but playing the Pikmin 3 game that they ported to Switch, and so that was the second time I played it, um, I really realized how much I enjoy it. Um, that and Sean and Nick saying that Tiny Kin was better than Pikmin. Now it's like, yeah, I'm fucking playing Pikmin 4. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Um, Are you, though? What? No, <laughs> is he kidding? He's not kidding. <laughs> no, no, I was gonna play Pikmin 4 anyway. Um, I hope that game is not Genki. If that game has performance issues, I'm gonna declare the Switch dead and I might just play indies on I it for the rest the of its lifetime. To be, I mean, how's that working out for Sports Story? <laughs> I mean, I'm already terrified that Tears of the Kingdom is gonna have some severe performance issues, but like if Pikmin 4 does too, I just forget it. Like, what are you the know. chances we get a new console? for tears of the kingdom no because they're going to give you advance notice i mean unless they Will decide they? to call it yeah i mean i guess if they if they call it a high performing switch then they can they can yeah they can probably turn it around but if it's a new console they usually have like six nine ten months of lead time for that so i don't know um but then again all i want is just a, a better performing switch i don't need a, a new console so i I hope so. I really hope so. I, uh, um, what else would take so long? Uh, I got Advance Wars Reboot Camp 1 and 2, just like you. Mm -hmm. uh, the Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC comes out in April. I am super. Cheater. I've been dying to get back into this game. Um, I, you know, can't I can't wait. even call you a cheater anymore. I think you like now cheat with Nintendo. I know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's full circle. I mean, yeah, I can. Yeah. 
Um, but I've been Dirty dying man. to get back into Forbidden West. I've I've basically hundred percent of it. So but before the DLC comes out, I gotta jump back in. I'm gonna go hunt some <laughs> monsters to get a feel for the controls again. And then uh Burning Shores comes in April. Uh Sea of Stars. I'm getting more excited for that one. Uh Silk Song, of course, the Hollow Knight follow up. You can't guarantee that's coming out. I know it's gotta come out this year. <laughs> absolutely has to come out this year um one i'm really excited about is the resident evil 4 remake because um if you remember a couple months ago i bought the the updated the resident evil 2 and 3 remakes Mm -hmm. uh because i got them for like 10 bucks combined or something like that and so i'm looking forward to this year i'd like to play resident evil 1 for the first time and then i want to play the 2 and 3 remake and then i'm going to finish it up with the 4 remake i think Mm -hmm. um so that's going to be a big part of my year um banishers ghost of new eden not maybe usually a game i would play but it's uh developed by don't nod and don't nod don't miss uh another one i'm excited for final fantasy rebirth that's the second um part of the final fantasy 7 remake that they started a few years ago i haven't played the first game so i'm waiting to play the first game it's a little closer to when uh, rebirth comes out um so i'm excited to play those because i I kind of like Final Fantasy VII, but man, the graphics are really aged on it. So um, I'm going to play those games in f- in easy mode, baby. Um, those are going to be easy uh, mode games. You know what I forgot to bring up? Where the hell is Goldeneye? Oh, is that not out yet? It's not. It's not out. And do we know if it's just the uh, deathmatch mode or is it the whole game? Can I play campaign mode? I have no idea. I don't see why you couldn't play campaign mode. For the most part, it's just going to be the Brom, you know, with the multiplayer in. So, I mean, I don't see why they would take something out that would involve programming. I thought that the well, it's only online for the switch for the first year or something like that. No, I don't think so. I I, I think it's exclusively online on switch. Correct. I don't think other. the online come goes away or or you're saying they're going to do online for other consoles after a year. Yes, that's what I some I mean, down the line. Nobody's going to be fucking playing this game after like a week. I uh, mean, like I don't I, I, I tell my, my buddy's super pumped. I said, listen, don't get your hopes up. This game is it's still golden eye. Like the game was awesome, but it, it was awesome. Yeah. It's time like it's not yeah. anything fascinating. Like Everybody and their mother is going to download it. Everyone's going to boot it up and play it for five minutes. And then that's going to be pretty much it for more. There's going to be some people that do play it for a while, but for the most part, yeah, we'll have a game night. Small. We'll we'll I'll set up a little game night for all of us. Maybe we'll have a little monthly I, mayhem on it. A little death match going on. Uh, figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll play it, but I don't know if we're going to okay. mayhem on it. Okay. I'm sorry. Jump the gun. Um, last games. I'll just go through real quick. Octopath Traveler 2. I think. I'm I'm a little down on Square Enix lately, so I don't know. I mean, let's I be honest. I'm be down on everybody lately. Who's really yeah, performing maybe. well? I just feel like Square Enix between Triangle Strategy and Tactics Ogre. I don't know if I'm feeling Square Enix that much. So, and then Octopath Traveler is going to be a 70 hour game. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to see what the reviews are. Uh, what the is plucky... the perfect length game? I'd like 20, 30, 25 20, to 30, 15 to 20, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, with completion goals. Yeah, I like, I like up that. to like 30. I like to I like to roll credits between 15 and 20. And then, yeah, maybe another five to 10 completion it, bonuses. It is that, nice to be able to play a whole game in like a week. Yeah, yeah, I think that's ideal. OK, sorry. Um, the, the last group, the Plucky Squire looks really good. Um, Blanc, which is a multiplayer game, comes out Blanc. Valentine's I, Day. I could have bet a million dollars and my betting has sucked this weekend that you would have said Blanc. It looks fun, like a fun game to play. I want to play what with the, Michelle. Umbrella? Is that on your list? Yeah, it's not on my list. Uh, I'll see. Wait, um, is Blanc a co-op game or no? Yeah, Blanc's a totally co-op. Oh, game. that's right. It's like that's the right. fox and the deer. It's like the fox and the hound. Um, Wild Frost, which I don't know if it's coming out this <gasps> year or not. Wild Frost definitely coming out. That has like yeah. a winter date. I, I mean, you think winter would be a good time for it to come out. <laughs> um oxen free oxen free 2 i have i still have some hype it's kind of died a little bit with the delay um still says 2022 yeah and then possibly maybe i might have hype it depends if my love rekindles but bayonetta origins Ceriza and the lost demon comes out in march i'm gonna see about possibly playing bayonetta 3 next month um see if <gasps> i don't vomit my way through but wow 
I'm going to give it a shot and see if like everything's in the past now and just look at it as like a new start and whatever. Um, Good for you. I'm proud of you, like John. It. I was actually going to try to replay one and two again, then do three. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to play three. Like, let me just, I'll just play three. I'm not going to go play those old games again. Um, so I'll just play three. So I'll grab a used copy. Oh, I posted the That's things it. in the wrong channel. Uh, I, I knew you were going to do that. I knew it too. But there's a lot of games coming out. There's a lot. I'm sure we've missed some. I mean, you missed Tears of the Kingdom, clearly. I didn't miss it. Um, but I can't I can't wait. And it starts in. Oh, it's in five. It's this Friday. Fire Emblem comes out. Oh, my gosh. I got the big uh, uh, collector's edition. How much was that? I don't remember. I ordered it like months ago. <laughs> What does it come with? Let's stop I didn't even like, I don't think I looked at the price. I just ordered it as fast as I possibly what, could. What, an art book? Nobody wants the fucking art book. Can we all agree to stop including the art book? In I know. Special? Nobody wants them. They don't. All I want is the cardboard, honestly. But I have I have the three heroes. You can't see this, but I have the Fire Emblem Three Heroes collection. Mm-hmm. And I have the Fire Emblem, um, the original Fire Emblem collect collection. Um, I think I have one more, but yeah. I wish I every had them all. game should come with a plushie. That's what we need. Hmm. I mean, I bought Shovel Knight because of it. A Camilla plushie would be interesting. Camilla plushie. Plushies. Anywho. Yeah, I can't wait. I don't think there's going to be a new Switch this year, but if they if they put out a like a Switch Pro, um, I'd be all in on that. And a Pro would 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 all extend I need. the life of the Switch for a few years. It does. It doesn't. It feel like it's really dying. Like it's too many games that are chugging. Uh, but why? I hate it. You know, I think that kind of brings us up into our next point. Let's go on. Yeah, let's let's go on. Um, speaking of chugging, not really. <laughs> hey, um, so we got some news this week. I don't know. You probably missed it. You were on a boat. Uh, but Ubisoft um, delayed Skull and Bones for the sixth time. Now, this is hilarious. Because we saw Skull and Bones in 2017, and it's a really good trailer. Like, if you if you want like a trailer that can really hype you up for a game, the Skull and Bones trailer is is one of them. Uh, really cool looking. Like, wow, this is like pirate fighting awesomeness. Um, even I was excited by it a little bit. And it's since been delayed six times. Um, and they also announced that there were three unannounced games were canceled. Didn't say what they were. Who knows? But like, very weird. They also paired this with the announcements that Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. I did see this. And Just Dance 2023 have not sold to expectations. And here's the money line. They said they blame these low sales and larger financial troubles on the industry's continued shift towards mega brands and everlasting live games um i kind of thought ubisoft was a a major brand and you know they have a bunch of major brands but Mm -hmm. so i the question is like what's wrong with ubisoft i don't think we have to answer that i don't answer they're working on avatar they're working on james cameron takes time takes time (laughs) they have a huge company i mean they can work on a bunch at a time but you're a manager do you see this as just like a project management problem like what what's going on with ubisoft I mean, announcements are, are I mean, I, I don't, I'm not going to pretend I understand the, 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 the meat <laughs> behind the meat. video game development, right? But um, I, I think we often, in video games at least, promise games and, and announce games and sometimes it's, we, we, we blow our load a little early, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the three unannounced projects, was it delayed or canceled? Canceled canceled so three and we don't know we don't know how far along they were or mm-hmm. anything like that but yeah absolutely yeah. canceled myron rabbit's not selling as expected i guess what was what did you expect i i, I don't know right and, and i just you have, have a to look theory back. on it i um, it came I, out at an odd time right was it right well uh, uh november when did it come out um october i think it was october, october. yeah because i think it came october. yeah it came out in october Right. Um. I. I don't know. I mean. I don't. It's. It's Mario. It's. I, I. I. don't know. I think it's an odd combination to begin with. I mean. I know the first one was. What did well, but it's not a game like you walk by on the shelf and you're like, what is this thing? And then you kind of flip it over and look at the back of the 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 bots and you know, for like an average Joe person, right? 
I don't know if like that's the first game I'm buying. I mean, obviously Mario on the front is gonna grab your attention for like the moms and the grandmas and all that other stuff. But yeah, but I don't care about them either, really. But like you know, I, there's I been some it. theories. I know you didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed the. Game. I, I did not enjoy it. But that's irrelevant, right? Because once if you buy the it. Hype- once you buy it, 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 it's a bean, right? It's a bean in the in the bucket. So it doesn't right. matter if it's good or bad. That's irrelevant. But yeah. they're saying no one's even buying it, which is which is odd, right? After the first one, but I'm curious to see the first one sales. Was it so good in the beginning, or was it dragged out over years? And also, did everybody buy that one? Because when did the first one come out? Early on in the Switch life, I think it was 2017. Yeah, not a lot of games out yet. And it's a Mario game. Nobody cared what it was. It's Mario. And it's going to be great, right? right? No, It's the same thing I'd like to look at um, Dance of the Necromancer or whatever it's called. Crypt of um, the Necromancer, yeah. The Crypt of the Necromancer. Like, like, the first one did what? And then the second one came, had Zelda. It had Zelda in it. You know, like, oh, my God, like, we've got to try it. right? And even people said it was fine. It wasn't great. But um, so when you throw a Nintendo-branded item in there, you would expect it to do well. But I guess I'd, I'd like to see what the expectations were. Um, I think it was a full price, $60. It was worth it. I enjoyed it. I had fun. I think there was plenty of content. Um, I don't know. That's a weird one. Yeah. I mean, I, I my, the first thought I thought of was like, yeah, I, I didn't really enjoy it, but it, it had good reviews. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I think you're kind of onto something a little bit where, you know, the first game came out and people kind of experimented with it because there wasn't a lot of games. Um, I think it was like in the summer of 2017. Mm-hmm. And now there's just a way there's always, always a wash of games. There's just so many games. Um, these games have to compete for attention. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people are like, I don't want to do this again. Um, the other thing, too, is a lot of their promotion of it really wasn't revolving around the Mario universe. I mean, clearly the characters are inspired by it. Yep. Um, but, you know, they had this uh, this other character with the green and black hair. Um blade what was his name blade uh blaze blaze blade. yeah something like that um you know so they kind of promoted it with with him and um yeah i don't know it it, it i don't know i let's be honest rabbits suck i hate the rat i hate rabbits in general yeah i think they were trying to take back the rabbits right they were trying to be like this is a rabbits game more than a mario game and you know maybe that affected them a little bit um maybe. but there were some other theories that Ubisoft, Ubisoft, um, discounts their games very quickly, Correct. which is true. It is true. They're very quick to put a game on sale. And I remember even before the game came out, I know multiple people. And I remember James said it to me, yeah, too. I'll just wait. He's going to wait for the sale. And I mean, unless you really needed to play this game day one, and you're going to wait for the sale. And sure enough, the game hit 50 percent off probably really quickly. And b- but look what happens, right? So people wait, mm-hmm. and now all of a sudden, right, you have um, Pokemon comes out in November, right? So, oh, I'm not going to buy it. I just spent, you know, and, and not everyone, you know, has the opportunity to, to spend $60, even $30, you know, on a lot of games, right? They might get to play three big games a year, and that's all they can afford, and th- exactly. that's fine. So maybe they said, I'll wait until it goes on sale, but then all of a sudden, they're waiting, they're waiting. Oh, Pokemon comes out. I want to play Pokemon. Right. And the then hype, like, the well, hype wears off. Yeah, the hype wears off. I, I don't I don't want to I don't have thirty dollars anymore to spend on this game. So it's like I right. get it. Yeah. You know, you know, it's it's interesting that Ubisoft, such a big company that makes really big and good games, um, kind of degrades themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you just said, their reputation is oh, just wait a month, it'll be on sale. Yep. You know, look at um they made uh immortal phoenix rising right mm-hmm. like that that was a big game it was fun but it again went on sale quick yep and you i know, think it like, cheapens it a little bit too right it's like why is this game when a game goes on sale i just wonder like is nobody buying it imagine breath of the wild just going down to like 15 <laughs> or 20 dollars yeah but you're just saying we don't care anymore but at the same point i don't know do you get more sales out of it yeah but well and it kind of leads into the theory and, and and maybe what we'd call the main topic of the show today um but besides i mean clearly gamers have caught on that ubisoft drops prices on their games but there might be some other factors in two that i think lead to declining sales overall for some games and here's what i want to point to as a as a gamer now try to try to like 
when I, as I read this list, picture it as from your perspective. These are the things that factor into our game buying decisions today. Mm. Um, first of all, what we just talked about, price drops, right? Which, which publishers, we know that Nintendo doesn't do price drops. They'll do sales from time to time for games, like maybe $10 off or something, maybe way later. Mm. For the most part, you're not going to save a bunch of money if you wait. Um, but we know what Ubisoft does just dis- deep discounts. Okay. Um, so a lot of times you might see a game, an indie game, like how many games do you put on your wish list on eShop that you're interested in, but you're kind of like, well, when it goes on sale, I'll pick it up, but I won't pick it up now. I just saw, by the way, I saw Ori went down to like 75% off. I almost bought it. Worth it. I know, but Um, I didn't do, I didn't pull the trigger. But like, that's what I tend to do with games that I'm not going to play day one. I throw them on my wish list. The first sale comes up, I buy it. Used games. Like this has been around forever. GameStop, right? Um, I'm going to buy this game. I'm going to buy it used. Um, Some people will go on eBay a week later, buy a used copy of it. That is not a game sale for a company. If you put out a Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope, somebody buys it and then they sell it to somebody else. That's not two sales. That's one sale. You think a lot of people, and again, I'm I'm oblivious to this because I I I don't know why. I maybe I should. I just never buy used games and I never sell my games. That that's just two yeah. things I've never done. I just buy new and then I just put them in a box or on a shelf. It's just, I, so I'm more like that too. Yeah, I don't ju- I don't trust, especially with discs. I never trust the way people treat their stuff. True, but I um, mean, yeah. I, I'm curious, right? I mean, what percentage of average Joe people go I, buy used games? I think buying a game used, maybe not necessarily GameStop, because you're still gonna, you know, they're still gonna charge you. You're but go eBay. Five or ten. Yeah, I see. But games if I went and go bought all Pokemon all Sword and Shield today at GameStop used. How much am I really saving? I am not going to argue for GameStop, but if you go on eBay, yeah, which which one would you buy? Shield. Okay, so Pokemon Shield. Um, I'm going to do auction ending soonest. So ending in 28. Nope, sorry. Uh, ending in one hour. There's one for forty dollars. No bids. So it's not even worth $40 to people. No, that has no bids. That means like $40 is too high and it's not attracting any bids yet. Well, at that point, you can go to Walmart and get it for $49 brand new. Well, there's one that's in one hour, 16 minutes, 10 bids, $28. So I don't know how, what it's going to end up at. Maybe 30 to 35 bucks. Yeah. I don't know what it, I don't know what it, let me see what the sold items look like. Half half off though. If you don't want, if I went and bought the digital copy right now, I think it's $60 still. Yeah. Or Walmart Um, probably did it for 50, but you can definitely get a discount. Like if you buy it used and like for games like switch games, usually those games are fine. Like chip cartridge based games are fine. It's discs that you have to worry about, but But used games do cut into the sales market, right? Um, uh, but how do you physic- stop that? Digital well, only? You, you don't. And I'm not saying you do. I'm just saying is right now, as a game buyer, you these are part of your choices. You can buy the game used. You can wait until a price drop. Uh, third one is physicals being released. And we have seen that a lot in the Ooh. last couple of years. Games come out. They're digital only. And then like six months later, they announce the physical version of it. And then mm-hmm. people want to double dip because they want to have a physical version of it. Smart. Uh, they just announced limited run, just announced that uh, Monkey Island, Return to Monkey Island is going to be uh, physical. So nice. all the people that love Monkey Island and they bought it digital, but they couldn't buy it physical. Now they're probably going to get roped into buying it physical. And that's smart, right? It's smart, but it's like it sucks. It's like they're not even trying I to get know. physical I, versions out. I, I, yeah, but, uh, why why not offer you're... physical and digital on day one? Because they know they lose sales. No, they would get sales. They would get them up front. But you're right. They're hoping to get the double dippers. Well, I think they're hoping at the double dippers, but they're also maybe you're right about these people buying used games. Like, I'd, I'd love to survey. I mean, I'd say Twitter, Twitter poll or something. I don't know how many people would get the answer, but like how many people buy new versus used? I don't know, but I mean, it, it just depends on your financial situation and what whatever, with a particular console. Is it? Is it twenty? Like what is it? Twenty? Like what percent is it? I have if it's no 30%, idea. Thirty percent. That's a lot. I bet you it's different between Switch and Xbox and PlayStation too, because the other two they still use discs, but they're also like most of the time the the data is so big, like people buy digital on the the other console. So I don't know. But I mean, saying. what I'm saying is it does factor in, right? Um, here's another one buggy builds 
right? A lot of people hesitate Seen to buy games lately. on day one because they're waiting to see if the game's buggy. You mentioned earlier about Witcher. And it's like, yeah, I'm excited for Witcher 4. I don't think I would buy that day one because I those kinds of games always have tons of bugs and like like not just bugs, but like game breaking bugs where you can't finish a quest or whatever. It's just, it's just so big, it's impossible it's to so test. so big. Them all. And so it's like, I don't know if I would waste my time on a Witcher 4 on day one knowing I could run into that stuff. I'll wait until it smooths out. Um, free to play. This is a big one for me. How many people play mm-hmm. games where they're playing free to play games for the most part? And if my kids were in the room, they'd raise their hand, right? That's um, my point. Yep. Ced- Cedric plays Apex Legends. He play he used to play Fortnite, not as much anymore. Um, that's pretty much all he plays. So, but when you think of it from that point of view, you're absolutely right. So for Christmas, they're not saying I want Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope. They're saying right. I want fifty dollars. What are they calling V bucks or whatever they call right. them in, yep. in Fortnite? I want a yep. fifty dollar card so I can get some of those. Right. So yep. like that's taking away from a of a sale of Ubisoft now. Yep. Uh, right. Disney, Disney Dream Life Valley. Um, and then what's the, what's the other one? Fall Guys? Yeah. Uh, Rocket League. I mean, like, for the most part, if you want to play on a budget, there's so many good free to play games. It used to be like one or two or three. But now it's like like all the games I just mentioned. Right. I, you could be playing Rocket League and Fortnite and Overwatch, and Fall Apex Guys Legends. And, and, and there's like a variety of games you can be playing. They're not all they're, first person shooters. I just mentioned Minecraft. too, you're going to have Disney Speedstorm. You're going to have now a cart racing game that's Disney. You're going to have a Star Wars first person shooter game. Like, yep. they're, they're just keep coming, right? You they're, don't they're, You don't even need to buy games. When we were kids, if we wanted a game, we had to beg our parents. Now kids can be like, yeah. they can play a whole bunch of games. And that's almost a $60 game, you know, in, 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 the, in yeah. an eye that's providing hours and hundreds of hours of entertainment. Right. And they're hoping for the whales, right? The people that are going to keep investing in the game. But not everyone does that. Yeah. No, um, there's, there's people that don't get their free battle passes from playing, right? And, you know, and people, it's funny. I hate the people that complain and say, and, and sorry if you're one of those, but like, they don't even offer enough V bots to get my next battle pass. Right. Like, no shit. Do they want you to spend $5 every season? Right. And, exactly. And, and no offense. Let's do it. Support yeah. the company. Give right. them $5 every three months. If that's what they want and they're giving you a free game, you know, that's why I like mobile games. If I play a mobile game and it has like the stupid ads and I'm like, this is a really polished game. I like it. I'll pay five dollars to get rid of the ads. Yeah, so it's I'm like life changing. Yeah. You're like, great. This is the well, awesome yeah. game and no ads in it. Yeah, but yeah. but it's, it's smart because like I played it for free. I gave it like two or three hours. And I said, I, I like this game. I'm going to see myself invest in some time in it. Let me double double whammy. I'll, I'll support them and I'll get rid of the ads. Yeah, you you're know? like throwing them a tip. Here you go. Yeah. But so, I, I, I mean, yeah. I get it. But I, I definitely think free-to-play games, that these games, even if they're not competing, right? Like Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope is not, comp- is, not, is not a game that competes with a free-to-play game, but it always does. Mm. It's There's there's people playing free-to-play games, so they didn't, they're just not going to buy your game. Um, and then last is streaming service. This mm. one, I, you know I love the topic of gaming it's streaming just, services. It, it, it's, I guess... The thing with this one is, I don't think anyone really grasps or understands it. <laughs> because like, it, it's like that hidden data, like Xbox and PS Plus, they're not going to share the information with you. Like, right. But how are they truly making money? You know? I don't know. I don't know. And I, I think it's, it's the magic of like, anytime someone downloads your game, every time someone boots your game up, like, is Xbox paying them? Like, I how, think we go under the contract? assumption. I think we've heard from Game Pass that like every contract's different. I bet you they have sort of a template like based on download, based on play, based on play time or flat yep. rate. And then they just sort of come up with numbers and whatever. The thing that's really interesting about it is when people talk about like, you know, when people talk about Game Pass and they're like, oh, they have this many they have 29 million subscribers and all that. They're making so much money. People forget like you need to pay the publishers lots of money yeah. to be giving away their game, right? Well, let's just make up an artificial number. Let's say they're making $100 million a month off Game Pass. I bet you they only are taking in like 20% of it. It's got to be a small number. I Well, they're probably making like 200 and f- like 300 million a month. Yeah, so that's that's about 20 to 30%. The right. 70 other percent is they're paying out their their developers and their other games and their publishers. And right. Because you're not just throwing, Oh, let me put like, you played guardians of the galaxy. You loved it. Right. It's yeah. on game pass. I, I don't think it just, it's like, Oh, they're just like here, throw guardians of the galaxy on there. Cause they're going to lose a sale for every person that plays through that game. Do they they're also pay use, a lot? 
they must also have to pay. I don't. What if there's like like a like a flat fee to get it on there? Like we're gonna pay you ten million just so that we can have it, right. and then we'll also pay you a monthly fee of whatever you get for downloads. For sure, that. for sure. But I think the other thing that streaming services complicates is that increasingly more people say, "Oh, I kind of like that game. I'm gonna wait and see if it comes out on Game Pass." I'm gonna another wait reason people and aren't see. buying. I mean, I want to play Sackboy's Big Adventure on PlayStation. And at this point, it's been out a long time. I'm just waiting for it to go on PS Plus, and then I will play mm. it. I just yeah. don't want to pay the money for it. I mean, I'm um, not big into the sales stuff, but I, I'd love to go look up like 10 years ago, five years ago, before all this big streaming stuff got heavy, mm-hmm. and look at like open and sale dates of games compared right. to big games nowadays. Like, like obviously Pokemon probably might not change. There's a lot know, of day one. Yeah, it's day one and it's $60 and it's not going to be anywhere else. But some of these games like you mentioned, like what's what's like a big game five years ago? How many did they sell? You know, X number of copies versus a big game nowadays. How many copies? You know what I'm it's saying? It's a whole like, different world. Yeah, I mean, it's like gaming. Gaming has changed so much just in like five years. Right. True. It's hard to really tell. But like there's there's just more people Like, put it this way. Every time, everyone has a story. Anyone who has a streaming service has a story where they bought a game and then right after it, it went for it went on a streaming service. In fact, I think Hambone bought Jedi Fallen Order and then it went free on PS Plus. I think Mm -hmm. that's that's right. Every time that happens, it makes you less likely to buy some game later. You might go, I'll buy this one day one. Maybe I'll buy this one, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to wait. Like, I remember Death's Door went to Game Pass. I was really excited for Death Store, and I was waiting for it to hit Game Pass. And then yeah. eventually, I said, "Let me just buy it." It just and depends. then, like a few months later, it goes to Game Pass. And it's well, like Dreamlight. Dreamlight Valley still is not free. Well, it's on Game Pass. What do you mean it's not free? If you want to play Dreamlight Valley on this Nintendo Switch, yeah, you have, you to, have pay to pay for it. And but there's you get like tiers. a certain amount of currency. I think with there's it. like twenty dollars, twenty five, fifty, or like seventy. I think I right. bought like the middle one. I bought like the fifty dollar one. But they're giving you a quote unquote free game and then currency. Currency, and you get a few extra pets and a few costumes. But right. yeah, but you can't just go download that game for free. Correct. It's not an option. But you can supposedly this year it's coming right. out, you know. Right. Well, you can on Game Pass, like I'm saying, is you can actually play it for free on Game Pass. You probably Pass. just don't get any of that extra stuff. You, no, you do. You actually get a, oh. some of that extra currency. You probably just the $30 version or whatever it is. That's part of it, yeah. Um, That's interesting. But yeah, like... You know, so I, I, I like I'm not going to say this affects certain games definitely doesn't affect Sparks of Hope. There is no service that it's going to end up on right now. But, um, you know, the, all these games have to compete against all of these different things. You know, just a couple months ago, there was a rumor of a game coming to Game Pass. And I was like, wow, can you imagine how much that affects the sales of that game? Because people are like, no, I just heard it's coming to Game Pass. And they're like, OK, well, I'm definitely not buying it until, mm. you know, and it's like and it's not it didn't come to Game Pass. But it's like you have to fight. But at the same time, that. right, when these companies say like, let's let's just say the expectation it was to sell 10 million copies of a game mm-hmm. and they sold 7 million and they right. missed their mark. Right. Oh, we 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 failed. You know, we we, we lost 100 million dollars. But then like, sure, it didn't meet its mark. But then you did go to Game Pass. Right. Mm-hmm. Like how much extra money? Sure, you didn't meet your 10 million sales mark. But maybe from a like a money point of view, you did hit your money mark. Yeah, sales sales numbers it, are going to die because of the streaming stuff. But it doesn't right? mean you didn't make your money back, and you know you still correct made your money. Yeah, like Psychonauts Two is not going to say like how many sales they made because the game was on Game Pass day one, right? Mm. And so it's like, all right, like, like, you know, same thing with like albums, right? Like, I mean, how many you're selling albums? Like, where do you buy albums? Like, we don't yeah. talk about how many sales of an album there are because people just listen to it on a streaming service. So Correct. those numbers have gone away. But but I think the point of all this is that, you know, gamers are catching on to how they can have a more affordable gaming habit. And there's still people like. I mean, me or whatever, who like, oh, I'm going to buy this game and buy this game and I'll buy games on day one that I don't play on day one or whatever. I've I've throttled back a lot lately, but mm-hmm. there's always people that just go on the eShop and they buy bunches of indie games. But Correct. people manage what they play by integrating in those free to play games or playing the long running games or buying used or 
um, you know, waiting for something to hit a streaming service. Like it's it's not just I'm going to the store and buying this game. It's not like the Super Nintendo's out. And if you want to mm-hmm. play a game, you go buy it. It really is like, where am I going to play this one? When am I going to play this one? How am I going to play it? So Agreed. I think that's what Ubisoft is is battling well, right now. Yeah, but, but the only the only negative we can we can wrap it up, but like the only other part negative I'm seeing now too is is that they're trying to jump on this bandwagon of battle passes and like mm-hmm. games that don't need it, yeah. right? Like they're trying to add a battle pass. Like, well, here's our chance to make a little extra dough. Where it's like you're forcing it into a game that doesn't really belong into it. Didn't they say something about Sparks of Hope having battle pass or? something i no, thought it has like a season pass season pa- season pass. Yeah. but that's another scam right because mm-hmm. let, let's pay an extra 15 dollars and maybe we'll get content in a year and a half from now it's like and you and you will but like you, you will they want they want you to buy it before you decide if you really like the game because they're going to give you listen they're going to give I, you content you could use right now that might be worthless later maybe I a think gun I paid that's for, less for xenoblade yeah i think i did, did maybe i didn't i don't even know i don't even fucking know <laughs> I don't know. I probably I did so if I got a costume. Yeah, but they, they suck in like, well, if you do it now, you get a costume when the right. game launches. Exactly. Or an item or so. I did that with Breath of the Wild. I didn't buy it right away. And then I, I finished Breath of the Wild and then I bought it. And then it was like, oh, there's three chests I can grab. And one of them had like some item which was marginally rare. Yeah, right. Marginally now. cool. But, like by the time I got it, it was like, this is like I have a thousand of these already. Yeah, exactly. Um, not as exciting. Anyways, so. good All conversation, right. though. Yep. Let's go on to some listener questions. First question from the Coos. Dry Bones is rad. Dry Bowser is even more kick What other characters, Mushroom Kingdom or not, would look awesome in a dry version? Also, I, I think oops. it's time. Don't interrupt the Coos. I forgot don't, the second question. I thought you were going to answer one. Don't interrupt the Coos. I'm sorry, Coos. Also, I think it's time for y'all to have the discussion on sitting versus standing while peeing totally separate question let's address the first one okay that's why i right that's why we don't have to repeat the second one i think i was doing it correctly i like dry humper dry humper oh. anyways i love this dry bones dry bowser i i love these characters mm. um, awesome awesome love them my theory is that shy guy is actually a dry shy guy um so if you take the mask off, he's going to be like, the, I, I picture him as like this zombie looking dry shy guy. Is he a dry, but do you think he's a dry other character? Maybe like he's disguised. I don't even think he is another. I think he just is. We he's just, just dry. He's just dry. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, <laughs> I don't know. I never really thought about what's behind the mask. Like, what does he do when he gets home from a hard day of work trying to kill Mario? He put his like stuff down on the counter and his, it's the his hood shy off. guy wife. Is it just like a dry bones under there? Yeah. She's like, oh man, what a day. I had to wear this hood and mask all day. I got jumped on and thrown around. I love Shy. Shy Guy is one of my top three favorite characters. If I had to rate my favorite three, wow. Bowser, Goomba, Shy Guy. All, all all bad guys. I love Shy Guy. He's very I love he's just he's so mysterious. <laughs> you know, and like, I love like in the people Mario games when they do like the little waddle and they run out, they run off the screen and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, what about you? <laughs> Try what? I don't know, really. I, I like um, Monster Hunter will have alternate <sighs> versions of various monsters from time to time. Of course, you bring in monster. Um, and I would like to see some dry monster versions, like almost like skeletal versions of the monsters. I think that would be kind of cool to see. Um, that's the best I, I can think of. Though. Wait, I oh, I thought we were talking Mushroom Kingdom here. He said Mushroom Kingdom or not. Oh, well, you course you have to do a fucking monster hunter. <laughs> what is How about Paper, Paper Mario? They fight the the dragon, the dry dragon, the dragon yeah. skeleton thing. No, I like, I think it'd be cool. I don't know. The pit. I don't know why don't you hate no Monster Hunter. Why you hate on Monster Hunter all of a sudden? I'm not hating on it. I was just Mushroom Kingdom. I mean, so my mind went. Dude, I'm totally playing Monster Hunter Rise on Xbox in like five days. Oh, I, what about a dry boo? <laughs> dry boo? Is, can a ghost be dry? I don't know. I don't know. I'm what else would be some it. crazy ones out there? We have um, PD Piranha kind of, right? Dry, dry PD Piranha? Dry Mega Yarn Yoshi. Oh my God. <laughs> Not PD Piranha. Dry Piranha Plant. 
Yes. That'd be kind of cool. That already exists. He's like dying. It does? Yeah. Oh. Evan has a toy of it. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I have all my plushies right here. Let me see. What else we got? What about a dry wiggler? I don't know. I You're like sticking that... to. I'm, I, I'm looking at other series. I mean, what about what if you played Animal Crossing and every character had a dry version for like Halloween? <laughs> like Halloween spooky version? Yeah. It'd be like dry Isabella. That'd be kind of cool. I think I like it. Latitu. <laughs> How about a dry Kirby? That's what we need. Like evil Kirby. I I think Kirby's appeal is his cuteness, and I think a dry Kirby would be. That, it's like the bad guy. That's the whole like he's the villain of the whole game. Dry Kirby. Maybe Meta Knight is a dry Kirby. Could be. He wears a mask too. Mask. He's, a, he's just a shy guy, pretty much. Second part of the question. Uh, I think it's time for you all to have a discussion on sitting versus standing while peeing. Um Without a doubt, Kevin, I never stand anymore unless I'm at a urinal um, because it's valuable checking my phone time. And oh, my God. I mean, if I have to sit down, if I if I have to go the, if I go to the bathroom to pee, um, I am sitting down and taking what? 10 seconds to check my email vagina? or something like that. I don't understand. I just I just told you, Drew, I'm checking my phone. <laughs> you you can't stand and pee and check on your phone at the same time, one handed. Can I say that standing while peeing is overrated when you were at home because you're just more likely to splash everywhere and have to clean up. Like if I'm if I'm at a public bathroom, I have no problem peeing in a urinal. But like over the wall. at home, like you got water splashing, look little droplets on the seats, so the off on the floor. Hitting magazines Who like are you? You just uh, disgust I think, me. I think Drew, I'm in the majority on this one. I don't think you are. I I bet I am. No it's chance. A, it's a gaming community that has switches. Pissing? Fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds of uh of uh Mario and Rabbids. I can just win go... a turn. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm 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 not for this. You stand I think up we like do a, a man. We should take do a, a poll. piss. Yeah. Okay. We, let's take a poll to reveal how wrong you are. I'm right. good with that. I we revealed how wrong Kevin was with his perform with his uh, resolution mode. <laughs> there did is we? no wrong. Yeah, oh, you were gone. Yeah, we did a poll on resolution mode versus performance mode, and uh, performance mode run won by like it was like eighty to twenty percent. Huh. Um, I mean, in the end, it's like whatever you prefer. It doesn't matter. There's no winner, but like There's most no right people do performance mode. So it was good to there know. There is a right or wrong for this question. I but. We'll have to let the people speak. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Let uh, it begin. Next question from Chris HL94. Who are your picks for the Super Bowl? Hmm. We get we get what we there's been four games so far. Yeah. I'm going with San Francisco wow. versus the Buffalo Bills. What? I am thoroughly impressed with San Francisco. Um they got Debo. They got McCaffrey. They got uh, the other guy. Uh, they got Kittle. I well, they didn't play the Giants, right? I mean, awe. that should be an easy win. I don't. Are they playing the Giants? My brother seemed to suggest yeah, that looking, they're I'm playing the Eagles. The, why would they be playing the Eagles? I don't know. He might have been wrong. I'm just, he said he thinks they're going to play the Eagles. The Eagles are the one seed. Okay. They, I was, so what did they play? Wait, I don't know. Don't they play the, the highest seed? So wouldn't the Eagles actually play the Giants? I honestly don't know. I don't even know who the bottom seed is. Is it the Giants? Because then it would be the Eagles. The Eagles would play the Giants. Yes. And then San Fran is going to either play Tampa or Dallas, which should be good. Oh, no, it's already there. The Giants at the Eagles. Yeah. And then the 49ers, playing... 49ers will host either Tampa Bay or Dallas. Correct. Which will be a hard game. I think regardless. Yeah. I mean, I look, I'm thoroughly impressed with San Fran. They have their offensive skill is amazing, but they have a third string quarterback. And I am I am impressed with Brock 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 Purdy. I figured how to pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. I am impressed with Purdy's, um, you know, just handling that pressure. I mean, he hasn't lost a game. I mean, like how many times do you bring in like a third string uh, yeah. quarterback and they don't lose a game? Not that they've played a really like a big bunch of tough teams, but. I am not line impressed. Is so good. That's why. I, yeah, I have seen Purdy th- have some really bad throws, and man, when they were playing, um, who did they play? Uh, I can't remember. Who Seattle. They, they killed him. Oh yeah, when they were playing in Seattle, he had so many passes where the guy who caught the ball 
was so wide open. It was absurd. Too, I, 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 like me and you to throw it. <laughs> I know it was like McCaffrey, like plus, so like plus on the record, the he's time got these, the world. He's got these 50 yard, line. 50 yard passes that he threw for two yards to a guy who was like nowhere near anybody. So I'm not like, I don't know if Purdy is the real deal or not, but like that team is just like such an automatic pilot. Um, I think the giants are um, a decent offensive team. I think they played a wimpy fraudulent Vikings team that had no defense Mm. and the giant, I don't know if you watch how much of the giants game, but there were so many guys wide open by so much because the Vikings play this like weird, quirky defensive system. Um, I don't think that Eagles are going to be as giving. <laughs> so, so you, but you didn't answer the question. So who do okay, you got? I didn't answer it. I think the Niners have a good chance to get in the Super Bowl because I don't know who else impresses me that much. I think Tom Brady's washed. Um, yeah. I think the Cowboys can put up some good I, games I, at times. I, I, uh, but yeah, Tampa I'm like, is shot. I, I agree with both of those. Yep. Tampa or Dallas. It's just like who shows up to play. Yeah, there's just nobody in the NFC that's impressive. I think, I think it'll Tampa be Cowboys and Niners. Both lose by 20 points in a game to yep. Philly. I, it yep. just it just depends. I'm not totally sold on Philly, but I think they're pretty good. Um, yeah. I think Philly will beat the Giants. Um, I I just I'm not sold on the Giants at all. all right, so um, what about the other side of the bracket here? Because you but I think still, the Niners you're still there. didn't answer the question. The, the AFC is a tougher one. I think going into today, I would think the Bills. But man, they they had a hard time against the Dolphins and they just kept fumbling the ball. Um, but I don't see the But they still pulled out the win. Yeah, it's it's gonna be either Cincinnati or the Bills. I already see the NFL right in the right in the storybook with mm-hmm. Hamlin on the stage holding up the Super Bowl trophy. Like Ooh, that's risky, because what if they Bills don't win the Super Bowl? Well, that's my point. NFL's gonna make it happen. Yeah, no, <laughs> I think the Bills versus the Niners is the obvious choice, but you just it's never the obvious choice. There's going to be an upset somewhere. Well, Kansas City's there, too. I mean, they 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 can. Still... Oh, yeah, the Chiefs. I forgot the Chiefs. And they're playing the Jags, right? No, no, they might play either the Jags or they could play Baltimore if Baltimore wins this game. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I never I never count out Mahomes. He's amazing. Um, yep. Yeah, I can see the Bills or the Chiefs, um, but you're right. Yeah, the Chiefs are the Chiefs are a good one. I can see the Bills beating the Chiefs, though. I could too. Um, and then probably the Niners, but I can see the Cowboys pulling it out. I, I you know, I the Eagles too. maybe, but I can see the Cowboys doing it. I did see the Cowboys like sneaking in there. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes with that. the Cowboys look unbelievable, and sometimes they look awful. It's just one of the weirder teams. Um, Agreed. But I hope they pound Brady tomorrow. I can't wait for that game. Pound him. Oh. Thanks for the question. It was a good discussion. And that's it. John, what do we have coming up the next uh, couple of weeks here? Fun show, Drew. Uh, we got a busy couple weeks. It's really nice. Mm. Uh, coming out, Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden are coming out January 19th. Um, I know they're both coming to Game Pass, but they're also coming to Switch and PlayStation. Um, those are fun. Uh, a little game called Fire Emblem Engage comes out January 20th. Ooh. Cannot wait for that. For Spoken is a big PlayStation exclusive that comes out January 24th. That's from the makers of Final Fantasy 15. Oh, touchdown. Some of the makers of it. You're still ahead of me. What? Or are you behind oh, me? Sorry. I don't know. Um, and then uh, this one, just for you, Drew, the Wonder Boy yes. Anniversary Collection comes out January 26th. What's in what that one? I don't even know what's in that one, but. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. But. uh. Yeah, so there's a lot. There's a lot coming out, um, and then it gets super busy. But um, yeah, the next couple of weeks, there's I think something for everybody. So hmm. yeah, Baltimore. Look at Baltimore tying it up. All right, that was fun. Um, thank you, everybody. That was our second episode of season four, and um, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, mayhem begins when you are listening to this get your ding dong xl and (laughs) uh see you out there ding dong away good night dads night ding dong the dads after dark show is part of the nintendo dads family of podcasts you can subscribe to us anywhere podcasts are available including google overcast spotify and stitcher and if you're using apple podcasts don't forget to leave us a five-star review 
pretty, please? Be sure to join us on the Nintendo Dads Discord in our Dads After Dark channels for some naughty After Dark talk. Leave us a voicemail with Anchor and we'll play it on our next show. Check our podcast description for the link. Follow us on Twitter and now TikTok at NDadsAfterDark or email us at dadsafterdarkshow at gmail.com. And a big thank you to Family Jewels for our show's music. That's all for tonight. Good night, dads. Sweet dreams.